What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Season Gaming Bitcast, episode 288. I'm your host, Ainsley Bowden, joined by the regular cast of characters here. Mr. Rodriguez, your mom, how's she doing? Yep. She's good. You know, still alive, yeah. so that's always awesome. Uh, you know. <laughs> We're all, Shout out good to start. alive moms. Good start. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just realizing I should have been. <laughs> and uh, my stomach is now going, what is your problem? And We uh, started with food. See. Yeah. I'm just looking around, like, see if I have, like, a sleep cookie. Nope, you don't. Somewhere. You absolutely do not. There's no food to be had until the show is done now. You did this to yeah. yourself. Deal with the consequences. I did. I got some Tums. I might have to <laughs> chomp down a few of those. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome yeah. to the gaming show, if you didn't know. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Hoag. Yeah. How are we doing, sir? I'm doing okay. I wanted to compliment you on the bravery of your attire during this tumultuous time in global foreign policy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just sure. getting prepared, you know, testing the vault this morning. I'm, I'm transporting my statues into the vault, making sure that, you know, the important things are covered. You know what I mean? So getting my jumpsuit ready. I got to match Travis, you know, he's already mm -hmm. uh, experimented in the show, but um, yeah, it's good. It's true. It's good. I ready. star in the show. I don't know if you guys saw. <laughs> oh yeah. We saw we saw Great. oh yeah well we got the, we got the text roll. in our message feed of is travis in fallout the amazon prime series yes yeah. it's, it's not not travis yeah. <laughs> yeah. i do wear a lot of makeup my... i do wear a lot of makeup for that because i normally look like um you know one of the the necro people you know the ghouls oh, the ghouls yeah i i, I call i call the people necro. smooth skin that's already <laughs> sort of been my thing so Smoothies. smoothies i should have uh i should have changed your name here to norm but good morning norm how you doing my friend mcclunky How's four doing great you? it's great man i've been i've been yeah. i mean i think i feel personally i'm the most equipped to survive in a fallout vault <laughs> because <laughs> i already never see the light of day and i'm used to the government trying to play psychological experiments on me i was gonna say um, that you are susceptible and willing to participate in experimentation I'm willing to participate in Fair. experimentation because I'm immune to it. I'm an outlier, Hoke. I ruin every test group I've ever been a part of. And <laughs> I've been a part of a lot of test groups, willing and unwilling. So this one as well. Yeah, yeah this is this is a great example of one. Yeah. Totally. All right, yeah. chat. This is just a long form and uh, environmental experiment. How long <laughs> will you funny, us? The, what you guys don't see about the experiment is that when the cameras turn off, we're still in these four squares unable to leave these these True. this is my cell these four <laughs> corners and uh yeah it's brutal being in this box somebody help <laughs> send that help. sounds like a good high concept bloom house movie yeah thanks yeah about right I'm, I'm, uh, please contribute to my gofundme for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well good morning everyone or good afternoon good to see everyone um today we're going to be talking about fallout obviously we're going to be talking about what we're playing we got some games to talk about we've got the star wars outlaws story trailer and some more details that came out this week we'll touch on as well um and of course we had the triple i initiative showcase this week which was really cool getting to see so many games and just a, a big blast of trailers and and uh updates on a bunch of uh highly anticipated indie games so we'll touch on that as well of course before we do that we have to get to tides picks which uh you know we went oh, with the fallout theme this week and it seemed appropriate because i, I gave her a little guidance <laughs> travis before. is the funniest here <laughs> yeah before i before she created him i gave her a little guidance i said look travis this is already done so let's just use his you know native picture for this so it works out yeah. well <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> Look at that survivor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hogue and Dan are looking like this is like a sexy Fallout show, guys. Yeah, hey, you guys, this good. is the look. I can't help what I bring to the party. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm honestly, this all is of not you guys me. This is God here, people. Look at this. Yeah. All this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I look like I'm about to tweet about men's rights, dude. I'm like ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's bigger than your bicep, which is yeah. hilarious. To be clear, I am sickly looking. I think that's and probably gaunt. accurate. I'll give you that. I'll give you the gaunt and sickly, but my ears don't stick out that much. Honestly. Yeah, that's now wait funny. a minute. I, we have to be nice to this actor. I was not calling this actor sickly looking. <laughs> I would only say that to you, Travis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> at least, at least my brand extends beyond, you know. That's good. 
Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why I'm the only one in like Blade Runner gear with a headset. My head's too tall. My hair's receding. My eyes are crossed, I think. Um, I'm not doing too well in this one. Um, well, how do you feel about you in the photo, man? man? What happened? How do you feel about you in the photo, though? <laughs> <laughs> Very fair. Very fair. Dan looks like he has Warhammer armor on. I don't know. You're, I think, I think that's uh, the Brotherhood of Steel, right? Dan yeah. just likes pauldrons. You know it. He's like, it's just pauldrons, nothing below that. <laughs> nothing <laughs> else. Just, pauldrons and a nothing, thong. Yeah, dude. Hey, He's guys, don't, ducking. don't do an internet search for just pauldrons. <laughs> <laughs> just pauldrons. <laughs> uh, that'd be a good one. Oh, man. Ty, thank you as always. Appreciate you. <clears throat> All right. I All saw right, the guys. others, by the way. The other, the other two that Against the Tide made this week for like at request was like us fishing and us in a metal band. And we were we were zaddies in all of those. Like the, we were all hot. And I I, I kind of Accurate. take offense to the fact that I'm always shown as a hideous monster <laughs> on all of the ones that make it to this show. I look I feel terrible. like this is your self perception. I do not recall a lot of this art being you as a hideous monster, Travis. Do, were you not here last week when I was a <laughs> a face stretch? Oh my God. Uh, bunny person. It was unhinged last week. We I was actually a monster. Bunny people. Yeah, but you guys looked like humans <laughs> in the face. I didn't even get a human face. They gave me like a snout. Hogue. It was crazy. I, I can't was, help uh, it if I'm adorable, Travis. Yeah, I know you can, and it must be great that AI likes you. AI thinks I'm a horrifying woman in all of its art. <laughs> Have you guys seen this? Against the he tide does have a put, tendency to feminize you. Yes. Against the tide has to put male to get it to make me look like a man. That's the only way it teaches the AI to do it. It's and crazy. it still disagrees. Yeah, it's like, are you sure? Are you <laughs> sure about that? But we love your art, Tide. Keep it yes, up. Whatever do. you're doing with Travis is fine. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. But more red on the hair, if you could. It, <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. That too. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> oh man all right uh let's see so what we've been playing boys i got a few new games to talk about this week but someone else can kick us off go for it yeah well i downloaded fallout 76 and fallout 4 for no particular reason uh but uh yeah the uh the amazon show obviously rekindling a lot of thoughts about the fallout series for a lot of people Big so time. i was checking those out i was also in a house where my eldest daughter had decided to go to a dance on Friday. And so my wife and eldest daughter decided to spend, I don't know, 30 more hours making a fancy kind of ball gown uh, for this dance. Uh, and so I was left to my own devices for a long period of time this week, but also not allowed to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which I'm playing with the same daughter. So I was getting back into some games that I had kind of left on the wayside a little bit including a game that I wound up playing a lot this week called Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. <laughs> I'm happy to say that the Justice League has been killed by me. Nice. Uh, and uh, the season that we had talked about in prior episodes, I have finally gotten into. I still think that there's a lack of story elements and overall kind of breadth of scope to what they presented. Great. But as a game, what they focused on is kind of the bits and pieces. So they've got a lot of cool sets with new synergies. Uh, in terms of weapons and armor and things to get. Uh, and they've got a few different maps for new incursions and <clears> end game <throat> activities in this game. But more importantly than the kind of content delivery, what I found was the game itself has that 30 seconds of fun, right? It has that famous bungee quote about Halo. And I think the game Suicide Squad was unfairly derided for being this quasi- story game that it really isn't but with excellent combat that probably should have gotten a more destiny type reception uh in in the long run i when i play suicide squad and i'm having fun i will play seven to ten missions in a row because i'm enjoying myself that much so i really really like that game i understand why people don't because it isn't that story game that it kind of pretends to be for long periods of its running time but it is a lot of fun to actually engage with and the loot chase is really excellent. A lot of unique loot, a lot of secret kind of perks to find when you synergize villains and things like that. So yep. I highly recommend Suicide Squad. 
I would give it something like an 8 out of 10 at this point because just playing it, the act of engaging with the game is enjoyable. And for everybody else that's out there on the media looking for more content or whatever it is that they're unhappy with from Suicide Squad, I think we're looking at things the wrong way when we when we disregard how enjoyable something is to actually interact with, the gameplay itself. So I, I, I love this arc. Argument. What? Yeah, I know we were talking. I said I love this arc that you took on this game because I know we were talking uh, in DMs about it this week as you finished the game and got through it and got into tune. And you you recall me saying like once you beat the game, there's got this. It's just really fun to play. It's got fantastic kind of loot design and build design and um, everything you just said. I agree with wholeheartedly. Um, I think it was probably there's probably some blame to be placed at Rockstar Rocksteady, excuse me, uh, feet with they heard the feedback around um we're worried this game won't have a single player narrative and so they kind of marketed it as no we're still going to have all that in addition and i think the expectations of that were maybe a little too high that they placed upon themselves but to your point and what i've stressed with this game what they delivered if you look at it from a looter shooter perspective um there's a lot of things they've done extremely well and it's funny you said you'd probably give the game around an eight now that you're in kind of end game and experience the whole scope of it because that's literally what we gave it <laughs> at yeah. SG. We gave it an eight. Um, and Zach gave it an eight specifically. I said I'd be, be between a seven and an eight overall. Um, but I think to your point, it does a lot of things extremely well that sadly, because of the conversation around the game, I don't think a lot of people will experience. And it's a shame because those things it does well, you know, if you enjoy that sort of gameplay, uh, people are going to miss out on it. It just a, a lot of the conversation seems silly to me because it's like, too. okay, yeah, you have <laughs> to get to level 35 on the episode to get to Joker. And I don't like some of the things they've done there. I think they shouldn't have locked certain aspects of their design behind things like that. But if you're enjoying playing the game, you want to play it anyway. What are you what are you getting Joker for except to play the game? So some of the complaints about this particular setup for a live service game, I just don't. I just don't agree with, and I think that Rocksteady got itself in trouble, as you suggested, by making this kind of quasi-hybrid game, when it really should just be essentially Suicide Squad American Gladiators, right? We made some cool uh, arena-type activities in PvE, go do them, have fun. We, we probably should not have structured the whole game to be this mirror of a single-player story game because i think it does it is obviously not that when you're playing the missions it's obviously what they call activities and i think activities is the right word for them uh but it's actually enjoyable to interact with the characters are quite different with their traversal and their powers and so i think it actually worked out really well um as a game in the long run but i highly recommend suicide squad i was playing a lot of that this week instead of rebirth i played some skull and bones uh, and then because I was having an enjoyable time with Suicide Squad, I decided to go back and try to do some of the games that were maybe a little bit more difficult for me last year. And so I was oh, also oh. playing. Yeah. Sorry. Before you go to that next game, one more comment on the Joker piece before we yeah. move on from Suicide Squad. So, yeah, your point about the level 35 of the uh, season leveling to unlock Joker. So just for everyone who may not be there in the game, you can unlock Joker for $10 right out of the cut if you want to. Um, or you can unlock him for free by getting to level 35 in the uh, season where you go do the new Brainiac mission and then you unlock Joker, you get a cutscene and all this stuff. Um, this one thing I anyway. pointed out the other, yeah, which is enjoyable. Uh, and, and I really like, like I said, I think last week or two weeks ago, the cutscene and, you know, kind of what goes along with that. But um, one thing I pointed out to some others, I think on our Discord, is that Joker is a new main character, right? He has his own skill tree, he has his own animations, his own lines, quips. Um, it's a fully designed main. And so when you think about other games like this, like say a Borderlands, where they add uh, additional main that you can be with their own skill trees and, and combinations and things, those are almost always paid. You have to pay to unlock those characters. So I just, I actually want to give credit to Rocksteady to say like, yeah, you could have paid 10 bucks to get Joker out of the cut if you want to. Um, but the fact that they gave you a pathway to unlock him for free as a new main, I think is deserves more credit. I don't know why... Like people act like it's a negative. You have to get the level thirty-five to unlock them. It's like, well, no, you you don't. Um, you can buy them if you want. They just give you a free path to do it, which I think is a cool way to have done it. And I think they could have communicated so, better on that, right? We talked about uh, this communication. Before, and I went for into sure. season one, and yes. I thought there would be more story elements 
That is what Agreed. the game was. In general, when we talk about season expansions to live service games, I assume that it will be a smaller version of what you delivered in the main package. Uh, and this is not that. This is kind of only activities that you do to get up the levels of the of the episode with some new environments and some new toys. But I think it is a very good game. And I think it's it's more enjoyable to play than a lot of live services games that maybe got a little bit less pushback. Uh, but it, it's not a Batman game. So I think that's part of where the pushback came from. Yeah, very fair. Anyway, just wanted to say that. Please carry on. Oh, yeah. No, I was just advancing to say I was also playing games that I had not had a lot of luck with playing last year to give it a new set of eyes because Suicide Squad was one where I had played it earlier this year and it was a little bit harder for me. I've gotten a little bit even better with my hand in the last little while. It kind of goes in leaps, right? So I've had a, another leap forward for my, my left hand, which means basically that I can keep it from pulling down on the left trigger without thinking about it, which is one of the big problems when you're playing any kind of shooting game. Uh, so I decided to try to play Remnant 2 again, because I know a DLC is coming up there, uh, and Jedi Survivor, because of nice. the trailer that we're going to talk about in just a little bit for Jedi okay. for um, Star Wars Outlaws, where I watched that trailer. I had certain concerns about it that we'll talk about it, and I said, I should give Jedi Survivor another try. And so I've been playing that as well. So it's basically been a a backlog triple a experience week for me on the video game front but i've been enjoying it how far did you get in jedi survivor originally? well the first time i played i got to like the high republic robot oh wow, uh, That's wow. and now i'm not there yet so okay jedi survivor is cool sweet very sweet and alex is in your chat saying i told home to go back to survivor yes i i Alex is, is very good at telling me uh, that there's good stuff that I have ignored or not experienced properly in the video Al game. Alex has strong opinions. Hey, I, <laughs> good. I, I like to get DMs from Alex. They're always very positive. <laughs> Man after my own heart. Yes, yes. That's not a bad thing. That was not a slight, by the way. That's just a, a statement. Um, so we had, a, we had, a, we had some running always, jokes about that. What do people always say it like it's an insult, though? You ever hear anybody... Say with like a really positive. Well, in, in like, your that case, guy's got a lot be. of opinions. That in guy's got a lot be. of opinions. Never heard it that way. <laughs> it's always that guy's got a lot of opinions. Like, you know, so many. Yeah, he stands behind what he believes. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It's a good thing. Um, go ahead. Go. I saw you. Go. Yeah, I was just gonna say I'm playing. Let's hear a lot your of opinions. Like yeah well yeah. it is not my opinion that i have a lot of stuff that i can't talk about this week unfortunately <laughs> uh, i just finished a, a reviewing a game last night that i'm not even allowed to say i'm playing early until the 17th so we can talk about it next week which will be before the game is out i'm getting read, ready for my no rest for the wicked uh early access review which is going to start on the 18th when that game enters early access Ain't no um, rest and for the wicked yeah. <laughs> um, Every time that then, title comes up. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I think I think that's pretty much all I can talk about. I, I told you guys last week I, I I finished beating the Apollo Justice series, so that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm playing some random stuff and I'm doing coverage and I can talk about almost none of it. I can't talk about Eternal Strands, though. We got into more content this week. So yeah, let's go. You, yeah, for those of you interested in that game, uh, this week we had... Uh, two interview uh, articles go live. One was about Unreal Engine 5 and the cool things that that game is doing with that system and, and doing some interesting things with thermodynamics and physics and gravity that are really cool. Um, and then the second article was uh, with the founders of, um, of Yellow Brick Games talking about uh, how their studio started and how they decided on Eternal Strands as their first project and sort of looking at that studio and the people involved in it. Um, so, you know, one, both, both that are kind of like insider, you know, you have to kind of care about the tech and industry and, um, uh, kind of more, more than just, uh, showing gameplay stuff. Uh, but I think really interesting if you're into that sort of thing, we've got more content coming uh, this week, two new articles, um, including a, uh, a preview of some of the powers and how they intermingle, uh, and that sort of nice. stuff. So lots of cool stuff, um, this week and uh for those of you who have been enjoying it please share it and get it out there because it is an indie studio and sometimes it's hard to uh to get um people interested and in people uh, the content in front of people just because a lot of uh 
a lot of uh, people don't know about this game. Well, it's a so, new IP. So new IP yeah, that problem. just got announced last week. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a problem in general, um, but yeah. Um, a, a good time. So you mentioned unreal engine five and I don't know mm-hmm. if you know, and I don't know if you can say or both mm-hmm. um, have they commented at all about being able to uh, be a higher frame rate on console with that game. Have they talked about that at all? They haven't. Uh, I played exclusively on PC, which I assume a year away from release is probably the only version that currently exists. Pretty standard. It's like playable alpha alpha format. Yeah. Um, but it was it was running at sixty FPS on like not a crazy super powerful PC. Uh, my guess is it'll probably run all right. But they they're one of those studios that um, I imagine because they're using Unreal Five and all of its bells and whistles. They're probably one of those studios that got like funding or like you know the equivalent of like a grant for being a unreal five mm-hmm. house or whatever um and so uh my guess is they probably will not have uh some of the optimization issues that i think other developers have had just because they're sort of like working in cohort with unreal engine 5 and they're very much like in their their corner but yeah i ran, ran five fine on what i what i uh, played and the the game um uses some really interesting like thermodynamic mechanics that include like if you use fire abilities the air in the world gets hotter and items will start to heat up and then sometimes yeah you're telling catch us on fire. It's crazy yes yeah, so sometimes things will just catch on fire because they're near hot air and sometimes that means the entire level can catch on fire if you're in like a forest area um and there, you know in the alpha state there certainly were some frame rate losses when like everything in the world was on fire um but surprisingly surprisingly good um and maybe that's just due to like the non photorealistic art style or something like that. But it it all it all ran uh, pretty well. So I'm I'm hopeful it'll be uh, pretty performant on console. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, and remind me, is this game next year? Yeah. 2025. Okay. They haven't announced a date, but I would say based on everything i know yeah it's it's okay. 2025 it's got some time yet yeah you can wait, wish list it now on steam and on the consoles like it's coming to all the the big consoles so uh meaning meaning not switch <laughs> because it probably can't run there um but uh yeah you, you can well, if it's uh, coming can, next year that that's actually what they said i was like really no switch on this one and they're like well you never know what's gonna happen <laughs> with the so, um, yeah yeah okay um before we jump i got a couple games to talk about but let's get caught up we got a couple uh super chats right before the show actually tau started us off this week morning my friend tau come in with five dollar super chat soup sup sup soup sup 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 can't even talk <laughs> dan's hungry he says soup. <laughs> he's like soup <laughs> please yeah. soup. i am so hungry big ass super <laughs> chat please tell me we got some fight fans that watch ufc 300 and the max fight pure chaos and madness all through it I was watching. Sorry, Tal. Not me. Nope. Yeah. Not I. No, not the four Sorry. of us, I guess. I know Elu, who I don't think he's in the chat, our, our, our uh, mod. He was talking about it last night, but no, I don't watch UFC. Yeah. Sorry, Tal. You know, you, You've got you know a blank, awesome to watch, though? blank look from all four of us. Power slap. That <laughs> stuff is amazing. I will sit there and watch, like, just highlights like you got your 15 i'm surprised you don't play power slap you're built like one of those guys it's so much all right at the risk of extending this sequence what is a power slap i'll tell you this people slapping the shit out of each other it's literally standing there in front of each other and slapping someone as hard as you can you take you take turns slapping one another and it's like these super ripped like 300 pound Uh, guys big dudes each other very big big. yeah until one of them just gets knocked unconscious or whatever they're just like "Mm." And then yeah, they like get it like ready. Bruno. It's yeah. kind of like when you, it, Hoke, have you ever told Hold a on. friend like, it's also like, women. I'll, have you ever told like you a friend know. like, I'll let you hit <laughs> me once, and they really make the most of it. They like start to line up with your face, and they'll be like, eh. yes, ah, uh, you know, no. Is this yeah. on like the middle school channel? Yeah, I'm talking about like the yeah, ouch my balls were, equivalent. Yeah, 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 when you were a kid, you know, when you were a kid, you're like, all right, <laughs> you know, hit hit me once, give, give me your best shot, and then they, they like <laughs> really take their time. It's like that. Hey, I'll let it to your point, Travis, uh, you said Dan looks like one of those guys. I'm a pretty big guy, pretty strong. Um, I wouldn't want to take a slap from Dan. He would crush me. <laughs> yeah. No, they all they all yeah. have uh, silverback gorilla bodies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And they're slapping. And which now is I funny. know. 
because it's now a very know. like not masculine open hand hit, you know, and they're like these ripped dudes and they're like going, Ooh, you know, with the, with the slap, but yeah, it'll not, I don't out. think they make that sound, no, but I know it's just funny that heard. they're slapping, <laughs> like slapping is like, a, uh, you're, you know, you're being, you're being rude and polite company, papa, you know, yeah. it's, it's, just, it's just funny to me. It, but, it's basically yeah, the it's, new generation of arm wrestling, Hogue. That's what okay. it is. You stand right in front of each other and instead of arm wrestling, you slap each, you know, you imagine slap. arm wrestling where you where you could get a concussion. It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, it's like the, you know, the old duels. It's a little more refined, gentleman, gentlemanly, yeah. like, you know, UFC. It's done yeah, by I'm the not... same people. Uh, Dana White. Or Tao is in the chat going, this is not what it, I asked for. It does, way, yeah, it does not surprise me that Dana White is at the head of this at all. Yeah. That's, I'm going to I'm gonna make a competing sport called, uh, not power slap, but proper slap. And it'll be everybody wears white gloves and you have to pull off your white glove and double slap like that. <laughs> and it will be based not on you going unconscious, but w w w there'll be judges to, to say like w w how elegantly you pulled that off. <laughs> 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 and I will compete in that one. I'll be the fanciest of them all. You wait and see. Oh my god. You are you know, we were just talking player. about super chats taking us off track. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> hey it. guys, <laughs> sometimes we have a tendency to talk about one super chat for like 10 minutes and really spiral out That's of control. So try to stay away from that. Cut 10 minutes later. Yeah. Proper slap with a white glove. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just inventing sports. Oh man. Oh man. All right, Tal, thank you for, for that. Good discourse stuff. uh google man google google you were late this morning sir a little bit late uh recently binged the entirety of killing eve and now feel conflicted about having a crush on a psychopathic cat murderer uh gaming and ramen having a ramen. crush i don't even know what killing eve is what is this no nope. yeah it's about a psychopathic cat murderer apparently is it a well, documentary it, or a... no no it's uh <laughs> it's got sandra o in it i think <laughs> It's oh. a story of my life. It's a biopic. Yeah. <laughs> Bi I'm really I, showing I, off. I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea. Biopic. It's a show about a cat murderer. Uh, it's a show so. about um, gaming and ramen. Passionate women. No. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. I'll have, to, I'll have to look it up, Google Man. You threw me for a loop with that one. Nope. Gaming and ramen is always good, though, you especially to, on a Sunday. That's the whole point of his, his super chats is he tries that's to throw us yes. off. Yeah. Yes, he does. He does. Thank you, as always, Not my friend. Right. Vintage with the five-season gaming memberships. Thank you, as always. Vintage like clockwork. Very, <clears> very appreciative. Thank you. <clears throat> Amazing. Uh, Nissa with a member comment. Ah, uh, Nissa. Uh, well, at least Ains does look like Luke. Okay. Uh, All right. I, I got a pause here. You guys, you know, are we have fun things. joking around and insulting each other from time to time, <laughs> show to show. Um, you know, it's we all in good fun. Line. We all love each other here. Um, oh, you know, we're all good friends. I think we'd hang out, have fun together in real life. Hopefully, we can make that happen one day. But uh, saying I look like Luke is, um, you might have taken it a step too far. I can you know, see it. it yeah. It, I mean, yeah, it's not that. Funny. I can't tell you. I don't think I know what Luke looks like. <laughs> that staring was so good. That was the ultimate reaction. <laughs> oh you man, like, you look like maybe his father, or you know that game, uh, the Alters, be. where they have different life paths. Like he was like on the life path of like I'm going to study hard and become a teacher, and you're on the life path of like. I'm going to train hard and become a bully. Like I could see that. <laughs> a bully. You know, I'm you know. not a bully. <laughs> uh, by the way, thank you, Nissa. Whew. Whew. All right. Oh, meant, I feel better yeah, now. Okay. We can carry yeah. on with the show. I appreciate I was you. I say, if you just put like some really short boy band hair on him, he'd look exactly like Luke, I think. Boy band Except, hair. Like twice his <laughs> size. And you're not even that big. That's a cool <laughs> Luke is tired. All right. That's Nissa, thank you. Um, Midnight Drury. As always, like Clockwork as well, gifting a season gaming membership. Thank you very much, Midnight. Appreciate you. And Fat Boy Horror in the house. Ah, oh, two pounds. Fallout 76 slash uh, Fallout 3 weekend. All weekend. That Fallout 3 on Game Pass on the uh, backward compatible Xbox works really well. Yeah, it does. It By really the way, does. Fat Boy Horror, great username, would be a fantastic gangster rapper. Moniker. Kind of is just Fat Boy Slim's follow up act. Dude, Fat Boy Horror he, sounds how like. How do you know it's not? Dude, if, if he sure. is a gangster rapper, 
that's I mean goaded goaded name for sure, one hundred percent. What makes you yeah, a gangster talking- rapper instead of a rapper? I mean, like I don't understand the distinction. I'm not a music guy. Um, you got to be gangster. <laughs> yeah. is, is that is that an adjective? Yeah. That's a that's a quality of being. Yeah, for sure. It, okay. Do you even have to ask that, bro? Yeah, I, I do have to ask sure. that. I will. Wow. I will show how unhip I am. I do have to ask that. <laughs> wow. I mean, no, no, that's pretty. I think even saying unhip makes you further unhip. Okay. Yeah. You're the opposite of gangster, just for the record. Like you're <laughs> pretty much as far as you can get in the other direction. Yeah, it's great. Um, the real watching, like what is what is the antonym you know, basically for basically white people? You know, yeah, Dan, you, you we try need to explain this to him. I mean, it's 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 <laughs> it's, it's it's super super weird. It is. I'm gonna, it is. I'm gonna step back off of this one. <laughs> um so speaking of fallout 76 yeah i jumped back in we were talking i was talking about this with uh fat boy in our discord um so a few of us like i said have gotten back into 76 so 76 is a game i've tried to get into multiple times um and i always fall off after just two three four hours it just you know it's kind of slow to start and you, you have to figure out all the kind of nuances of it um, so I started again this week, like a bunch of people, as Hoag said, there's a big resurgence for all the Fallout games. And yeah, um, I saw it at the top of the list about a lot of the Game Pass like uh, numbers that they've been showing. Yeah. Yeah. And Steam charts like more than doubled. And, you know, it's just kind of jumping up. So um, but I'm glad to say I've gotten over that initial curve. So I'm I think I'm like 11 hours, just over 10 hours in um, now. And I'm kind of cruising along. I think I hit level 10 yesterday um explored some stuff and uh, i'm really enjoying myself it's cool to be back in the fallout world and fallout 76 obviously i think we all remember its launch but it has come an extremely long way since then did you they added characters i I, I reviewed the launch version my uh, title for the review was worst virginia (laughs) but it's (laughs) but it's come it's come a long way now it's come a long way (laughs) that's pretty good when Um, they added characters to talk to it got better yeah dude the the, it was so weird because like it w- reviewing the first version, it uh, it felt like games I have played in early access or like for uh, coverage that were like in a super early alpha state where you're like, okay, I definitely see what they're going for, but like there's no characters or the plot line is like missing all of its main like beats because you're just talking to computer consoles, you know, like you're gathering data or finding a book or whatever. And uh, my my first thought was like, man, if they finish this game, I think it's gonna be cool. <laughs> but the version I reviewed was like so not finished because I played even before the game was out, so it was even more bare bones. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, it's uh, it's come a very long way. Um, I'm playing on uh, PC as well. Uh, obviously, I think earlier or later in 2023, it got the update on uh, Series X and PS5 to run at uh, you know 60, and so you can play it there. But I'm playing on PC and in, in ultra wide at high frames. It's really nice. It's it runs very smooth no issues and um yeah the world is like i'm shocked at how big that world is like i've said many times i'm one of those guys who just likes to wander around and explore and this like kind of just feeds into that i i have as you can see i have all kinds of fallout merch i have the fallout 76 world map like up on the wall back there and like i've played for 11 hours and the map's like you know this big and i've had looked at like that much of it like maybe like your, map, your map's probably inaccurate now because they keep adding to it right yeah and that's before yeah. the expeditions like atlantic city and all the other places yeah. they've added too so yeah it's absolutely crazy but anyway i'm um, really enjoying that and then the one game i want to talk a little more about this week was uh witch fire which is um from the astro oh man the astronauts i think is the developer but it is um this is the one that debuted uh, a few years back it's a first person shooter but it's kind of like uh, medieval ghoulish type thing, you know, spell casting and stuff. And um, it's still in early access on the Epic Games Store. Uh, it got its largest update this week, this past week, uh, called the Ghost Galleon update. They modified a bunch of stuff. And really, the reason I wanted to bring it up is not only because I'm playing it and I'm actually going to be doing an early access review on it, but Travis, it plays the game design is a lot like Remnant uh, 2. So it's a first person shooter. It's got six classes to start that you can choose from. Um, and it's kind of got, uh, you know, one area. It's kind of got this roguelite feel to it where you go through runs and you power up and level up. And then there's, um, you know, like I think six other areas that they're creating that you can unlock or get to or that are, you know, will come. Um, and I'm really, really enjoying it. I streamed it on 
Thursday, I think it was. Had a good time with stream checking it out and uh, playing through it a little more right now. But it's it's really interesting. It runs really smooth. It's the artistic direction, like the art design, and it's really strong, especially for a small team. And um, I think this game's going to be one to really watch as it goes, uh, you know, continues to get developed and gets eventually makes it to its 1.0 release. So um, if you haven't checked it out, uh, I'll have a review on it soon, but you can look it up. It's just called Witchfire. I think a lot of people saw it when they debuted the trailer because it kind of made waves and then it, it kind of fell off because it's just an early access and it's not on everything. But if you watch the trailer, it may kind of uh, refresh your memory of what the game is. It's really cool. Sweet. Mm. Yeah, I want to check that one out. Witchfire. Yeah, Witch yeah we had a good time. Yeah. No. Um, Dan, I played mm. Hitman 3 this week, man. I got like several oh, achievements in that game which is pretty cool um, so did I. I don't pop <laughs> achievements bigger. much because i don't care about them but you know obviously i was doing new content the the most interesting thing which i told dan in in uh, our dms is that i have hitman 3 not the world of assassination bundle and so when you load it up now it has like all the levels but if you go to a level you don't own it says get access and you're supposed to you know take you to the shop to buy it so i did that like sunday night after last week's show and then monday i loaded it up and I could play any level. I didn't buy anything. So it's like whatever their kind of key system is for checking in what you own has some flaws. But I played like the Miami <laughs> racetrack. It's garbage. Yeah, whatever it is. So I played like two levels that I technically were from Hitman 1 or 2 that I didn't own. But I played them full, fully through, got achievements and everything. So that was cool. So you're playing it out of order? Basically. Oh, I'm just playing random levels. Yeah. I got you. Cool. I don't care about the story at all. all right. uh, the, Fantastic. Yeah, the story. story is not very well told in that game. It's like it I really appreciate the and two th and three and then two. I don't know what they did. They did that stop motion crap because they they were they were they were, they were oh yeah I forgot about that that was weird. yeah because because they were struggling with 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 money basically at that point wasn't wasn't and, two when they had officially gone indie like they yeah they made one and then they went indie. Yeah, and then they they ran out of funds basically, so they had to do all the stop motion, all the cutscenes were just little. Yeah, it's always funny pictures. to see that because most of the time, at least in my experience visiting studios, the cutscenes aren't fully done in house. Like you get help with that, you like get some consultant or third party that like is really good with animation studio or does cutscenes or whatever, and then they take like concept, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, damn it, why am I forgetting this? Where you, where you like frame it out, you know? Like storyboarding? Um, storyboarding, thank you. Yeah, they take like storyboards or like a placeholder cutscene and then turn it into something that's fully animated. So my guess is they probably just talked to those people and found out how much it would cost and were like, yeah, screw that. And you see you see some like uh, indie studios doing that. Um, like, I don't know if you guys checked out Open Roads. It's like an indie game it was on, I think, Game Pass. I saw it. I haven't played it, but I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, D's been playing that next to me. And, uh, that game has like partially animated cutscenes. Like, somebody will kind of move their head and open their mouth a little bit. And then you'll hear like all the dialogue after that. And so it's like a kind of, you can tell that they were like, all right, this is like as good as we're going to get with how much dialogue we have and how much, how much money we have. So, uh, there's, they, they do some creative stuff there. Very nice, Dan. You play anything good, or you just in kind of a I'm, repeatable yeah, older yeah, games? Pretty much, yeah. I don't, I don't play much. I play MLB, you know, and uh, I watch a lot of MLB. <laughs> now I'm still playing Rise of the Ronin. That's the longest game I think I've ever played in my life. I kept thinking it would end. <laughs> I was like, hey, it's gonna, it's gonna end, and then it keeps <laughs> going again. Are you saying so, that it's a bloat goat, Dan? It is for sure. A bloat goat. Rise of the Ronin is a bloat goat. Certified? Certified right here by Dan Rodriguez. Bloat goat. Now official. Rise of the Ronin bloat is our goat. first bloat goat official. Bloat and, goat. And Hell yeah. A super awkward like last three seconds of that. Every, <laughs> yeah, I know it just sits time. there. Yeah, probably, I'll cut that down by a second or two. All right. What's going on here? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it's it's. I like it and it's fun and I'm really enjoying playing it. But I kept thinking this, it's going to end, and then there's more stuff to do, and they add more stuff like stuff that you've already done. They just kind of reset it, and in the main story, I'm just like, wait a minute, I already did all this stuff. Why am I doing it again? I'm like level fifty, and now I have stuff I'm doing that's like level twenty five for some reason, and I don't understand it. 
but it's fun. That's all I've really been playing. And, I, I uh, want everybody to remember this day when Ains becomes video gaming's leading shock jock. That yeah. it was April fourteenth, twenty twenty four, while wearing a vault hoodie. That Mr. Ainsley Bowden debuted the bloat goat sound. Yeah, this is where my <laughs> career change took off. That's right. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, shout out That's to C Moat on our our Discord who created that actually for us. Uh, so I don't know if they're in the chat or not. People go by different names and different channels, but shout out to them anyway. Um, speaking of bloat goats, and I don't know if it is a bloat goat a certified uh, game, but I was joking with these guys, Hogue, to your credit, um, that I was watching some, or I was listening to a podcast yesterday, and they were talking about, they had a probably a 15-minute conversation on how bad the story is in Spider-Man 2. And it just made me think of you um, ranting about it, because I haven't played it. Uh, I get in but, trouble you know. every time I talk about it, but <laughs> thank you for bringing it up again. Uh, no, <laughs> Spider-Man 2 is a disaster of storytelling, and I, that pains me to say, because 1 and Miles Morales were some of my favorite games uh, on the PlayStation 5, and Spider-Man 2 just took a turn to Nowheresville, and unfortunately is just really, really bad. Sorry, folks. Yeah. I never finished it. So, <clears throat> well, there you go. I guess, I guess I got paced out. It happened with Ragnarok too. I was enjoying myself, but it kind of just started getting a little long, and then I just never finished it. Yeah, I think when you collect, like at the start of the game, one of the quests that you can do is to collect all of Sandman's parts. And the the notion is, when you collect all of the Sandman crystals, you're going to get a story beat at the end that's going to make it worth your time, and it's going to be something that is valuable to you either on a lore or story basis or potentially on loot or something else and you get done with it and it's like you hand the crystal over and it's like thanks man it's like oh wow that's great what an ending uh and <laughs> spider-man 2 throughout every plot line is like that yes wow god it kills me every time you talk about it but it's true i can't even argue with you I was going to say, Dan, you're like the biggest Spider-Man guy. but I love Spider-Man, and I, I still yeah. love the game, mostly because of the combat and stuff. But God dang it, man. There, it was just kind of... The villains were underdeveloped, I think, so bad. I mean, you took two of my favorite Spider-Man villains and just basically minimized them to garbage. Uh, you know, I don't even... And, and now, all I have left is the Green Goblin. So if three comes out and they destroy him, and make him just a freaking joke. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, it's, 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 it's that, you know, I mean, do better, Insomniac. I know what you can do. You did not do it this time. You know, gameplay, fantastic. Looks amazing. Technically, great game. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. else just shouldn't have happened. I did clean my room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the game. Have, have you gone to the amusement park? Or, you know. No. Any of the other boring ass stuff? Hey, uh, <laughs> Ho, here's a good question for the panel. How tidy are folks? Like, are people's rooms clean in this chat, or are you guys kind of like messy? I can tell Dan is messy. Your your no, your room's no, clean. no, no, really, no. no this not Dan. <laughs> All right, this <laughs> tidy. I am the most neat person. I can't like my dog will like go in like he has a box of toys. And he will take one out and like put it on the floor. We'll get another one two minutes later. It drives me absolutely crazy. Like, like my 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 kitchen table becomes a collect all sometimes of like cups and crap, and it drives me fucking nuts. Sorry for the language, but it drives me crazy. I, I get so mad. Like if I get <laughs> that's my one thing. I need to have neatness. This I just live with because I'm this. I'm just there's nothing I can do anymore. You know, okay. would you hit a certain time? Yeah, say, that is that is not his room. I don't believe, no, right, Dan? That's like no, not your thing. No, um, no I mean no. it's the only frame of reference I have for his how, the state of his house. And I have young kids. So, I mean, did I mention the dressmaking? It looks like a cloth monster exploded in one of the. <laughs> yeah, my fiance sews her own clothes, so I know exactly what you're dealing with. It's crazy. Yeah, having kids is a uh, that definitely changes the equation. Um, depending on their age, I'm I'm pretty neat. I'm not like the neatest person. Everything doesn't have to be just right, but uh, I try to keep things organized. And clean. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's also tough to get this question answered from the horse's mouth. I feel like your partners are who I should be talking to for this question. You know what I mean? They'll, <laughs> my, they'll tell you the real answer. My wife prefers to have everything very clean. 
Nice. Yeah. I get I I'm on her team. I'm the I'm the tidy <laughs> one in our house, and my fiance is a tornado of chaos, and I'm constantly <laughs> trying to contain it. So how about you, Hoke? You neat? Uh I'm I'm definitely on the messier side of the spousal uh team, but I don't think either one of us is a neat freak. Nice. Okay. Fair. All right. That was not what I was ex- expecting. I wasn't expecting Hogue to be possibly the least neat of us. But again, <laughs> I'm surveying. I'm surveying you guys personally. You never know really about how honest you are yeah. or how neat you think you are. Some messy people think they're neat, and then I see how they live in the world, and I'm like, bro, you are not neat. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you are a disaster. Yeah. Right, see this right here? I didn't see this. See this? That's a plate, <laughs> right? From I don't know when, because it's not mine. I have Does it have food on it? It has a quick it trip. Apparently, box. has a book on it. Yeah, that's a that's a quick trip. Which box is with a former with an old pretzel. Plate's usual probably. usual purpose is oh the whole. Oh and, and I want to burn it down. All right, <laughs> that's, that's 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 what goes through my head, and I'm just it, wow. This is where I struggle with every day. Uh, this is my uh, psychotic. <laughs> so it's, speaking it's, of it's, things it's, that aren't neat, can't do it. The Fallout <laughs> show came out this week, and that world <laughs> is very messy. True. <laughs> Mm. They trying to segue couple, us there they had a couple events happen that maybe knocked some items loose i just wanted to talk about the fallout showings so yes i was segueing us because i wanted to make sure we talked about it and i didn't see it on the list it, it is it's absolutely on, on our list i think you should look again sir fallout resurgence is that the show well, well do you look at the it's bullets or discussion. just the headers uh I, the bullets, you know, that's that's getting into too much detail. I like to be surprised. <laughs> he's a it's lawyer. He doesn't, right he's a lawyer. Friends, he doesn't look at bullets. Yeah. Come on, Doak. You're yeah. killing me. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not instilling me with confidence here, man. Well, we were talking about Fallout 76, so I think it's an okay time. That's fair. Yeah. We'll we'll jump around. Go, ho, yeah, go. Who cares? I just wanted to say that I feel bad for all the Halo fans out there because every video game in the world is getting a good adaptation, except one. So the Fallout tell that show to is... Assassin's Creed. What? Tell that to Assassin's Creed. Well, I, are they working on any Assassin's Creeds right now? No, but they, they didn't get a good adaptation either. Did you see <laughs> okay, that? but that's the before was... times. The before times? <laughs> I didn't know there was a delineation. This is crazy. All right, tell me. I, I, I think I'm, I'm counting basically from Arcane on. They've all been winners in terms of video mm. game adaptations. And this Fallout show, I was not excited about. I was not enthused about. And I actually really enjoyed watching what I have watched, which is about the first five episodes. And I really, I want to say that first and foremost, because I'm going to say something that some people are going to get mad at, which is I think they exactly captured what a Bethesda Fallout game feels like in that it always feels like there's something interesting over the next hill or to find in the next house. And they've got this notion of exploring and looking at little stories and jumping in and out of them done really well and then it's mostly disappointing when you actually get to that next hill and that next house there's not a lot that actually is as interesting as it seems like it could be so i think it really captured the bethesda fallout feel and i like the bethesda fallout games but uh it's amazing to me that they were able to do that in this format of a prestige expensive type tv show because it really does through the separation of the various aspects of what playing a fallout game is like into three different characters capture a lot of what you do in a fallout game and i think that's why you see the resurgence that's why you see people downloading fallout 76 and fallout 3 and fallout 4 it's it's a premise that isn't inherently interesting okay it's the post post apocalypse let's go explore and see what's going on and while i don't love the ghouls and the super mutants and what's actually in a bethesda fallout game as much as the premise i think they captured both ends of that in the show and i highly recommend anybody watching it yeah, uh, I think no that's... spoilers, please, because I've yeah, no spoilers. Seen... I didn't yeah, spoil no, I've only seen the very beginning of the show, and I'm uh, watching it with my fiance. So we got a, uh, you know, I have to, I have to get time windows. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Very, it's very chaotic. You guys know this. Yeah, sorry, um, I, I did not intend to spoil anything. No, you did. Great. You didn't. Yeah. Just saying in in general. Well, so far, I've really enjoyed the um, the the world, and I think it's funny. I like the writing a lot. So. Good times. It's well done. Yeah, it's well uh, done. so uh, my wife uh, is really enjoying it. So we've watched a lot. We finished episode six last night, so we've got two left. It's an eight episode season. Season two has already been confirmed. Um, so yeah, I Hogue, I think you said it really well. It captures the essence of what a Bethesda Fallout game is. 
Uh, it's kind of got all aspects of that. Uh, I like the set designs are really strong. I, I think that they did a really good job of representing what that world is like uh, in the show. So we've been enjoying the heck out of it. Um, yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> you said as a Halo fan. And the funny thing is, generally speaking, the, Wait, the Halo... I, I have one quick question for Hogue. Yeah. Does Uncharted yeah. count as part of the Before Times? Because that seems kind of recent. Uncharted <laughs> is one of the current adaptations, so it might be uh -huh. the closest to being bad. It's but pretty it's bad. Not bad. It's not objectively bad. Has it's not a great well, Uncharted. Not great. Objectively bad, but but you know, I okay, still nothing's put, objectively would... bad. It it's not. <laughs> it's not a tire fire on the side of the road. It is a movie that maybe doesn't strive for much. And I don't know that it captures Uncharted very well, but it also is a kind of fun, serialized, old school adventure movie. Um, did you need to interrupt me to bring up Uncharted? Sorry, I was, problem. I was trying, he just I was put trying. his hand You could have waited till I finished speaking. His brain is literally going. I'm He's just like, I, I need to speak things. now. I would have now, forgotten. Uncharted. Oh, go on. <laughs> um, about Halo, the, the interesting thing about season two is if you look, it's generally well regarded. I agree that Fallout puts it to shame in terms of video game adaptations. I'm not a huge fan of season two, even though it was better than one, which isn't saying a whole lot. Um, but if you look at like the actual coverage of season two, it's actually pretty well regarded. Of Halo, I mean. Yeah. Which is kind of I mean, crazy. You just keep talking up Halo. I mean, that's fine. It's garbage. Uh, season two. Have you watched it? Yes, I watched the whole damn thing. And it of drove two? me absolutely crazy. <laughs> <laughs> until the very end, which was actually kind of cool at times. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. I love that fight. Uh, you know, but generally I was like, this is stupid. Yeah, I, that, that, I, I don't think we can just go on I don't think we can just go on media reception to these things, right? I do think that the, oh. the downloads we're seeing, the, the concurrent player numbers, those things are better indicators of whether the adaptation is successful at drawing eyeballs and is as something people are enjoying separately because people want to go get more of that by downloading the video games. I think you saw that with Last of Us. You see it with Fallout. I don't think I saw anything like that, at least reported on, with respect to Halo. Am I wrong on that, Ains? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think Fallout is an easier case because it's a broad, single-player, open-world game with multiple entries that you can go enjoy. Um, and they, But to your point, they don't do a good job in Halo of... They just don't, in my opinion, they don't do a great representation of the Master Chief in the games. Right, no. so it doesn't make you want to go respect the lore. I don't think there's so much, you know, it just doesn't seem like intentionally. I mean, I, I, you, you say you roll your eyes, but I mean, let's say 90% of the people that you know, I, I, I wasn't it. rolling my eyes, I was kind of thinking like they you. do to some yeah. degree and they do to others. I'm a casual Halo fan. I well, that's what I was going to say. Like, how much of Halo's yeah. lore can you actually speak to? Right, that's I mean, the games. Right. But as a project, the Halo TV show doesn't get you into the brain space of, you know, I really want to fight the Covenant. Agreed. How do I do that? Agree. That's what I mean. And when um, I've been there and done that, I'm like, man, the games, you know, even that I don't know, you know, because I haven't played. I mean, I've, I've played the Halo War. I've played most of the Halo games, actually. But <clears throat> except for that Spartan one, I guess. But uh, I, I don't read all the books. I haven't watched all the movies or whatever shorts or whatever they do. Uh, I, I just don't care to. Uh, it, it's it. It just seemed like Halo was just like there was so much there that they could have taken from just from the games, not not excluding what everybody says. There's so much more there. They they just didn't borrow enough, maybe. And I'm okay with you know making stuff your own and kind of you know, but even this this show, even Fallout, is is kind of similar and to the other. You know, I mean it's it's. I mean, I don't know. I want to spoil it, but it's you know the Fallout Three. What do you do? What's your goal? You going to find? Oh yeah, the, the, the main character in the television show is essentially the main character from yes. Fallout Three. Yeah, basically, it's the same thing. Or Fallout Four. Basically, it's that's it's not that much different. It's just a different person. You know, it, it's 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 not like they they, you know, far be it for me to give any Nolan any credit, you know, ever <laughs> in my life. But he did a really good job. He also didn't write this, so. I understand, you know, it's, I understand my, you know, enjoyment of it a little bit more. And I can critique but he did a really good We could job. go longer on this. I, I, I think that they lean too much on the old music uh, for their scene I transitions. I love that part. That's one of the best I, but, parts. But it's every single transition they do. Like, it's 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 great in 
small bits. Mm. And it's, it's every single one. Uh, so I think they, they lean on that a little bit too much. There are some shots that are weirdly arty for what this is, which is a kind of baseline pop culture TV show. There's there's a lot of shots with like blown out lighting and like directly at the sun that are just strange choices for this kind of project. That's a no. We could talk about all those things, but I really think it's just a, a, a huge success for what you'd want to do to elevate a brand if you've yes. got the ownership of Fallout. I'm actually really surprised that Microsoft isn't, at least as far as I can tell, more directly involved in this. You see that Bethesda Game Studios is, but it's going to work so well for Microsoft that I feel it's like amazing they have that they don't have a heavier hand. hand. What? I don't think I don't think Microsoft is legally allowed to say that they're involved with anything that is a TV show for the next two decades. After TV, TV, TV sports, I don't. I just don't think that that's what they want to be associated with. No, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps, but certainly when we're talking about Amazon being the other side of this equation, you're going to get more leeway, even if you're Microsoft, because Amazon is one of the bad companies that Congress hates. So Microsoft to not be fair, being more kind they of kind of suck. So you can say whatever you want about Amazon. I'm happy the show exists. Uh, I was not too, too I was not too happy with the Lord of the Rings show that they made. I haven't been very happy with Amazon shows in general. But Fallout is a lot better than I thought it would be. So to give credit where it's deserved, Fallout is a good show. And I think people are responding to it the way that you would expect a good show to be responded to, which is, hey, how can I get more of that feeling? I really enjoyed that feeling. Hey, there's a lot of games out there that are really long. that are available on Game Pass and I can go play them right now. And so I, I think it's a it's a good product. It's the way we should like to see these video game adaptations work. I like it a lot more than The Last of Us. Again, primarily Ains because of the way these games are. It's not a strict copy of Fallout. In fact, it's, I think it's further down the timeline than any of the other Fallouts. Uh, and because Last of Us was just this copy of a singular plot line, it doesn't work for somebody that already knows that plot line as well. This Fallout project works a lot better, even for fans of the Fallout brand, because it's it's more Fallout, but it's not an exact copy of what came before. And what I was saying about the split of the characters, I think they solved a problem that would have been apparent as soon as you try to adapt something like Fallout, which is players go in and do a whole bunch of stuff, right? They go and they lie and they cheat and they steal and they launch nukes and they dress in different clothes, and but they're also a vault dweller. And they also do these various other things. And so they separate it out into these various plot lines in the show in just a very smart way. Uh, and I don't love all the plot lines equally. I'm not going to tell you that. But they come together in different ways that are a little bit unusual. And I think it's well worth everybody's time to watch. Yeah, I think that's generally well said. I agree on Last of Us, too. Funny enough, I was listening to another podcast. I was talking about the Last of Us TV show. And they made a point, And I think we made it here, too, that I agree with, which is Last of Us tried to follow last of us one to a t um but because it's so curated right and condensed for a tv show you don't get that same the experience of the moment to moment banter and relationship building with ellie and joel you don't experience the same way in the show as i did in the game and i think the game is superior for that reason and following it trying to follow it to a t i think hurt the last of Us show i liked the last of Us show i liked it a lot but I, I think it hurt it more where I do agree with you in this sense. You get the feeling like if, you, if you've if you enjoyed Fallout 3 and Fall, the Bethesda Fallout games, to your point, you get the feeling like you're in that world in this show and you're going along with some of the craziness in the world and the characters and some of the storylines, plot lines that you would expect to see in the world. But it's not a one to one from a game. And I think they successfully navigated that pretty well here. It's the media. That's my experience. Though. Yeah, that's, that's the yeah. thing. Keep in you mind. Know, you, you're. you're it's always going to be different when you get your hands on a controller work, you know, and you are Joel or you are, you know, <clears throat> master chief to that point, you know, it's always going to be different because you, you, you feel like you're that person. You're you, when you're in a TV show, it's just, it's a lot more disconnected. It's just going to be that way. I think, I think that's what makes games so unique in, you know, it, but, but fallout, I think did a pretty good job of bridging that gap a little bit. Did you, you know, finish it? Uh, then? Yeah, wow, yeah. dude, you bench it nice. Damn, yeah, it was great. Yeah, well, it it's was good. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, it was, um, he's a big Nolan fan, Travis. Yeah, huge yeah, Nolan makes fan. Sense. All Nolan, yeah, Nolan, Nolan put out. My house. Yeah. yeah, Nolan, they like, uh, they like Fast and Furious. Those guys seem yeah, like good guys to me. Yeah, yeah, can't, I can't, you know, well, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fair dose of Westworld in Fallout. I mean, we can be yeah, honest there. Is. there. 
Yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing. Depending on it how really much depends Westworld on what is. season of Westworld. Yeah, is. that's that's the key. Yeah, what season is it? But yeah, I mean, it, it's, just, are good. it's always going to be different. So, you know, it, it's it's a tough, and we've seen it so many times over even going back to Assassin's Creed. It's hard to to bridge that gap and bring that game to when when everybody, or at least the majority of the people that are going to watch something like that, are going to be people that played the games. So it's it's. It's a tricky kind of little thing, and I think Fallout did it pretty good. I mean, Last of Us just did, you know, but like um, Alejandro said, it, it's it's the best episode was the ones that weren't, you know, that, that, that weren't in the game. You know, like that episode, I don't know, with, with uh, Nick Offerman. Well, I think, know, it was as Aiden said, I don't, I don't think Last of Us Season 1, at least, did enough to establish Joel and Ellie, which are the the foundational pillars yeah. of your story. And so, what worked in that show were the times that they did a complete sojourn to something else, right? Bill Offerman's uh, episode has does it have any Joel and Ellie in it? Maybe at the very end. Yeah, it was like a uh, very yeah, beginning. I don't remember the, the whole episode is pretty much them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, I I think that's I think that's well said. Uh, you know, my favorite Halo game, uh, Dan, is the one where you play Master Chief out of his armor for ten hours. That one's yeah. really fun. Yeah, I like that one. Where he too. just runs around, yeah, in his in his underwear. Yeah, that's the best one. <laughs> oh man, I haven't people it potted hurts. this in there yet. That's a dating sim, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. It's called. They call it Mass Effect Two. Yeah. yeah. Your goal is to. Uh, Cause the fall breach <laughs> with your sexual exploits. I saw Dan's face. <laughs> oh man. Can't I just don't think those adaptations that are just going to copy cutscenes are going to work as well for people that know the cutscenes as well. I think these adaptations that take kind of the concept and broaden it out to their own show are going to work better for gamers. Generally, I get I get what you're saying. Like, I think, but I don't know. A lot of people I know who watched Last of Us show and didn't play the video game were like, oh, it's amazing. And I feel like the the people who had played the but game. That's what I said. Little... What's that? That's that's what I said. I said that those adaptations are not going to work for gamers. Yeah. Uh, and these ones like Fallout are. And for people that didn't play Last of Us, I think that can work better because it's essentially just the same movie. Yeah. In, TV. in regards to in regards to I think some of the stuff like The Last of Us, yeah. But then you look at the alternative, right? Fallout Fallout, I think, is a great example of like keeping the spirit and telling a different story that kind of incorporates some of the plot elements of of another game uh but like dude the cutscenes in halo 2 if that was in the show if it was like lore on the covenant and the great journey and all that like i would have far preferred that to what we got you know what i'm saying so i think we have we have both examples we have all three examples we have sticking to the material and it being good completely deviating from the material and it being terrible and completely deviating from mostly deviating from the material and it being pretty good. So I feel like the only one we're missing is sticking to the material and it being a disaster. Have we seen that recently? Have you no. seen the Street Fighter movie from 20 years ago? Is that sticking to the material though? <laughs> Have you seen that movie? <laughs> that, that... Oh, oh, no. I, I, I feel hey, like uh, uh, when the when the story hits, sticking to the material is often the the play because I don't know if we've seen that completely backfire. Well, I don't yeah. think Last of Us works for me. I don't know whether it works for for you who played the game, other people. But I didn't watch the show at all. It it worked for me, but show. not to the heights, you know, that some people hold it. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think I don't think Joel and Ellie ever came together in the show, and I actually think not those episodes as that I said that worked that were complete sojourns, I think screw up the pacing of the, the trip across America because they just take time out and just do whatever. And they, they get their Oscars or their Emmys or whatever else they're aimed at. But I don't like the way that that show came together at the end of the day. So fallout for me is the right approach, but yeah, yeah. since last of us is so specific, it's not a story about the zombie apocalypse, it's a story about Joel and Ellie. I, I don't know that you had another choice, but to adapt it pretty directly, it just isn't that interesting as someone that played that game already. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, so Ade says, um, you know, I have to say season two of Halo is really good. Chief as a human was refreshing. And I'm telling you, there, there's a lot of people that agree with that. Um, I watched the first yeah. episode of season two, and it was just above the bad line for me to no longer hate watch it. 
which is what I was doing with season one, <laughs> but just below yeah. the quality line to where it wasn't worth my time. It was in that golden section of, I'm probably never going to watch it again. Unfortunately, I will say, I don't think the problem with the halo show is that master chief is human or that he takes off his helmet. I think that was absolutely the right choice. I just think the story they told, at least from what I had seen in season one is just like awful. Just every yeah. Part of it's bad. Yeah, season one wasn't good. And then like in season two, I think episode four, I'm trying to remember, um, is the fall of Reach. And it's like, okay, this is a gigantic momentous event in the Covenant human war in Halo. And they it's like a 40 minute episode, you know, and it just they it, it's very the episode isn't ter again, it's not terrible in and of itself, but when you think about the scope yes. of what that means to the Halo universe and how they presented it, it's just like I thought it was going to be multiple episodes, like a huge battle, which is right. all of reach. And it was like 40 minutes and they're just done. The next episode moves on. And I'm like, what the budget, hell? Dude. I it's couldn't even so tell what was happening. Dude, it's, I was the like, it's, the, reach? it's the 10th most expensive show ever made. Yeah, I mean, I, I, but I mean, you see, you see budget. Like the, whenever, whenever they do a battle at like, uh, you know, in Game of Thrones, you read about how yeah. long, how much that episode costs. And it's crazy. Yeah. Um, I my guess is it's it's got to be budget, right? I, I don't know. They spend a lot of that's, money. That's to make the difference that show, between dude. a forty minute a forty minute scene and an entire season of it. Like that just sounds expensive. I mean, maybe maybe the actors were just you know being really you know pricey with their. It's like yeah, you know Pablo, we had like you know two hundred million dollars for this, but you know I want forty of it. Maybe they're just being kind of greedy. <laughs> I, don't think Pablo cheap, is, I don't think Pablo is a forty million dollar actor, yeah. but I got, uh, we got know. like fifteen bucks left for the episode four Fall of Reach. You can't <laughs> even put him in his armor. We're just gonna have him running around. <laughs> so let's do that. That'd be great. Uh, Claude Simeon said Street Fighter gives you vice and saying the day I destroyed your village was the worst day of your life, but for me it was Thursday. That's a great line. I that like is that. a great oh, monologue. Julia. I I I I, do, I will Rest say in that peace, monologue, Raul, cool. Julia. You didn't deserve that. You didn't deserve to. I mean, I don't know. You need God. Who was his agent? He said, "Raul Julia, you're amazing. Uh, we're gonna put you here. Here's a, here's a here's a. It's a based on a video game. You you be. Great. They offered him a lot of money. Okay. It's I mean, yeah, that so and that video game was across the world at the point in time it was made. I mean, that's how all game adaptations was. were. We are in a golden era of sorts. We're, we're oh. talking about bad things being not connecting to us, not not literally horrible things. Right, that's true. The Street Fighter yeah. movie is a bad representation of Street Fighter and a bad movie to boot. It has some good monologues, <laughs> it has some good performances, but it's a bad movie. Similar to the '90s Mortal Kombat, which are still fun to watch. Whoa, but bad movies. Oh, it's Whoa, a bad. Oh, don't movie. talk yeah. about the '90s Mortal Kombat that way. <laughs> great, great. More of a I mean, comedy. At least the first one. I, I, it is I not like a great it. movie. How Back dare down, you? Travis. Um, rewatch, rewatch it. Re have you it. seen it, Goro? It withstands, it withstands the test of time. Have I seen what? Goro in that movie. Oh, in that yeah, movie? Dude. Let's Always totally makes you laugh. Impact. Let's yeah. dance. That movie is fantastic to watch with friends. I mean, it's like, <laughs> so look, is it a piece of art? Like, a, you know, like, a, you know, we can sit here and criticize it and talk about its lore. No. But as like a junk karate movie, it's really good. It's great. Watch that with a friend tonight and you will be laughing and having a good time eating a bowl of ice cream. Trust me. I watched it's it a few years back. Soundtrack, again. Man. It's good, dude. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Travis, it, everything you just described, I'm not going to take away from you, but that's a trash movie. That's an enjoyable <laughs> trash movie. Look, there's trash, and then there's trash that you enjoy, which I think, you know, that there's that's trash, and then there's junk food. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Ames. Yeah. That is that is exactly a great way to put it. There's trash and junk food. Like a movie <laughs> that you watch that you can't even bring yourself to enjoy is truly painful. But a movie that you're like, look, it's got camp and it's fun, like Evil Dead. You know, those are good movies. Like okay, you give right. those sevens, you give those sevens Oof. and eights on on the score Same scale. conversation. Just saying it. Ain't. Pick, pick a different Same analogy. <laughs> what, what Evil Dead? No, I'm evil like an Dead Evil Dead fanatic. Camping. Yeah. Oh, I mean evil those Dead, movies evil are Dead. awesome. But that's oh, my, that's Evil Dead was point. campy. Yes, the original. They're, yes. They're, yeah, all, actually, all of Sam Raimi's movies are campy, which I think is a a virtue in his case because he knows what he's doing with it. Um, but yeah, like Evil Dead is a great example of like sevens and eights as a kind of the camp as an art form and it being not a negative so i don't know i, I mortal Kombat. i will defend the 
the Mortal Kombat <laughs> movie. I that okay. movie's fun. That movie's funny. It's <laughs> you'd watch it. You watch it. It's funny. It's fun to watch. Like you, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't bother you that they weren't going for funny in most of the scenes that you find funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is uh, Death of the Author, Hoke? Oh, I'm all for Death of the Author. I'm just saying that you're defending this, and I got to believe it's because you were five years old when this movie came out. Uh, I was but... five years old when it came out, but the, the reason I defend this is that I reconnected with a friend of mine that I hadn't seen in years because we went and wa we watched this movie on like Netflix, and we were just all cracking up, and I just, I'm close with those guys now. And I, I mean, that's, that's a real experience that the movie caused, you know? And so what, what are you going to, you can get into the whole, like, oh, let's, you know, let's, let's treat this as a, uh, a film project and cr critique the framing and whatever, you get really technical in it. It's not uh, great, but the sets aren't awesome. <laughs> oh, 100%, 100%. But, uh, if you're just looking at like, how much did I enjoy my time watching this movie, which I think is the, really the only useful metric for like regular people that you're recommending or not recommending a movie to, I would put it in the recommend column. Okay. With, with go. the explanation of like, but you know, you got to be into campy movies and you got to know that you're getting into like a, 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 a weird Kung Fu movie, but it's still a good Kung Fu movie. The fight scenes are good in that movie. I have a certain amount of enjoyment of watching trash movies, but I still recognize them as trash. Junk food. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 hey, listen, I met my wife at a Cracker Barrel. What are you going to do? There we go. Same thing. Right? Look, he oh. found his junk food partner. All right. <laughs> Amazing. No, I think don't dare call point, her trash. Right? She is a nice lady. Cracker Barrel with Michelin star cuisine, but you can still enjoy oh. it. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, but do you, do you rate like a... Uh, you know, a Michelin star restaurant. Um, I, I I'm rate those on the same, on the same grading you know, scale as like a fast food restaurant. I don't think you grade on a curve, right? Oh, I think you do. I think, I think you've got essentially fancy restaurant and not fancy restaurant. And I don't think you actually compare them directly to each other. I don't think you compare them, but you grade them on the same, the, the same metric, right? It's, it's, they're both competing for your, food dining dollars and so i don't think there's a separate grade scale for those two things i just think you you understand that uh it's like video games right uh there's not a separate grade scale for horror games versus comedy games you you give it a seven or an eight if it's good or great with the explanation of like why you're giving those things what makes it good at the thing it's trying to do and i want there to be room for an earth defense force to give an eight which i did Earth Defense Force. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that that's a, that, that is a valid score for that game because it is a fun game, even though it can't that's hold a great to IGN, game. isn't it? It's, an, it's a great. It's great. That game's great. It is great. Okay. It's a great game. And okay. you can play it and like, you know, read my review. I'll give, I, I, I will defend that game because it, you know, it, it's, it, it's just fun. Like you play that game, you're having fun with the boys. What 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 are you gonna do? Well, I don't like fun more? in my reviews. We've talked about this. Yeah, but that's an that's a nonsensical stance. The, okay. I I just. But can't... I was having fun with the boys. <laughs> we said for all manner of trash. Oh my god! Like, what do you draw the line? If you're if you're having fun with your friends, and that's sort of the point of gaming, right? Is especially if you're playing a multiplayer game, is to have fun with friends. It accomplishes its goal. There's plenty of games. South Park Snow Day. That you can play with your friends and really have no fun and that is not that's not a good feeling so i just think it's good to separate these two things it's good to separate you know if every this is all your opinion so you're already not grading on some sort of scientific grading scale so why why can't we confer why can't we compare the burger kings to the michelin star restaurants because i can tell you i've been to many michelin star restaurants and some of them i haven't liked as much as i like burger king I'm mean. not the one that is defending the house's proposition that Mortal Kombat of the 90s is a good video game movie. <laughs> it's we a good started movie, talking that, like a it's fallout, good. right? It's, it's, fun. it's a fun yeah, movie. Yeah, we, we've, we've come like around the globe <laughs> in topics right back to where we started here. Look, All if, right. if Hogan exactly. and I are left to our devices long enough, we're going to get in a philosophical debate. About yeah, I know. You, you, you've, come, you've gone all over the place and we are moving on. So, Fallout, watch Hilarious. it. It's good. Enjoy. Fallout yeah, and good. play and play uh, Earth Defense Force 2017. Okay, that I won't recommend you wrong. <laughs> it's a good, uh, have you played it, Hogue? It's fun. I have played some Earth Defense Force games. I can't guarantee I played the one with the year you just said. Yeah, well, a, a lot a lot of them are actually legit bad games, but 2017, 2023, both great games, especially now that those years have passed. 
it's even more funny it's supposed to be like futuristic getting attacked by aliens and it's like why did they choose a year that was 100 percent within it's funny anyway we didn't move on well, to star wars i mean i think yes, the only thing we can really get this show back on track is to talk about star wars aliens what yeah that won't turn into anything please help yeah, really we already got, got it out of our system last yeah, year. You're the host. You got to right. intro this. Now. Hey, listen. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm um, hungry, yeah. So this is not helping the situation. <laughs> hey, that can we just play here. the bloat goat uh, graphic as a palate cleanser? <laughs> 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 no we're gonna reason. have to use blow go the show the show yeah, is gonna be a blow show is bloated hit me Ains. <laughs> come on <dude. laughs> by the way someone so someone earlier i think it was fun. time said uh ty guy and Ains in the morning i was like oh god could you imagine that show oh, um that tau let's sweet. get let's get tau let's super chat can we spin Perfect. off in the show are we allowed to spin off Ains? <laughs> All right. What the hell are you talking about? All right. Five, five dollars super chat from Tao. How you feel about the fall of Reach is how I dislike Civil War being a movie when it's a 40 volume epic comic movie. Pisses me off. I get that. Same thing. Fair. I much. didn't even know it was a comic. Oh so. my God. Yeah. Civil War is the, one of the most it's legendary huge. comic storylines ever made. Like the. They they made like a whole bunch of volumes of it where it's from different perspectives on the character. Like, and it's yeah, so it amazing and, and nuanced and impactful. And what they did with the movie is I in my opinion, they just told a completely different story. They kind of you can see the through lines of like, you know, the the legal unmasking of of uh of vigilantes and all that, but the stories aren't really structurally similar at all. So I kind of just separate myself from that. I don't think you can really tell the marvel comic book civil war story on in a movie at all it would have to be like its own show and i just don't i don't know if you'd ever get that or if you even need to it's okay for a comic book to just remain a comic book um, sure yeah, the that, yeah love mcu nice. civil war the the actual comic book the, the movie's okay I, I don't have a big problem with the movie mm -mm. wait well hold on hold on oh i'm in it this is the problem I thought you were talking about the new Civil War movie. No, oh, not MCU. Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah, I knew yeah. MCU Civil War. I'm talking about the movie oh. that you know Alex Garland. Yeah, Civil no, War. no, that's a good point. The, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so I, I got it. I got it. Just uh, the context of the. That's why I was like, "How is that movie a comic? I didn't know that was a thing." Has anybody seen that movie? I keep seeing that it's good. It's supposed to be good, it? but no, haven't yeah. seen it. Alex no. Garland's did, a good writer, but I have no interest in seeing it. Did you see that Alex Garland? You know, he did Ex Machima. Um, and uh annihilation and a couple others but he after this movie he said he's done he doesn't want to make movies anymore it's quoted like <laughs> yeah. two weeks ago that's yeah. crazy TV shows shows. Too. maybe we'll make video games yeah <laughs> maybe <laughs> all right with that we're moving over to star wars which was supposed to be our main topic we we did a full circle to get here uh star wars outlaws so um we talked about it last week we took guesses on the release date i know we kind of dabbled in different areas it is releasing august 30th cool uh right right uh i think it's a good place for it that's a um, great we place got, for it. i think i think travis would say it's releasing august 27th unless i'm mistaken yeah that's fair too three days early depending on the additions which we'll get to uh we got the story trailer this week which was uh Thank you, you know love you hard hardly any gameplay um you know, in addition, we saw gameplay last year, but we didn't get any new gameplay. This was more setting up the character, setting up the theme of the game, if you will. Uh, if you didn't know, I went into the Ubisoft uh, kind of press details to see if I could find out to learn any more about this game. So here's some of the details that you may not have heard or seen. So if you don't know, the game takes place between uh, Empire Strikes Back and Jedi. Um, according to Ubisoft, how you want to take this, I don't really know because they don't define it, but they say it's the first truly open world Star Wars game. By that, they mean that um, when you go from planet to planet, you're actually flying. So there's dogfighting in space that you can have with your ship between the planets. There are five, I believe, planets. Four of them are known in the Star Wars universe, and a new one was created in coordination with Lucasfilm for this game. Um, so, uh, according to the uh, press release, it's Canto Bite. Ugh. Is that sorry. I'm sorry? That's just a natural reflex. I apologize. <laughs> um, Akiva Tatooine. I can't say these things properly. Tatooine. I'm not a Star Wars you guy. Did you say and Tatooine a, as Tatooine? I did, dude. He's not and, a Star Wars guy. And Tashara, which is the new planet made by Massive and Lucasfilm. 
Um, it has a reputation system because it has a uh, very lengthy stealth missions. Basically you're playing a scoundrel and you can approach them however you want. So you can go stealth, you can go guns blazing, blah, blah, blah. The stuff we've heard before. So I don't know about you guys. I, I as seems to happen with a lot of these games, especially the past several months, conversations about character design or price or all these other things kind of the take internet. over the conversation. Yeah. The internet. So I literally just looked at this and I'm like, open world Star Wars game, I I'm in. Like, it, it looks fun to me. Like, I, I can imagine just going into this world, goofing off and having a good time. And that's all I was expecting. I didn't get involved in any of the nonsense online about it. But what are you guys thinking at this point in time about this game? And we will get to the additions and the cost and everything here after this. But just about the game itself, how are you feeling? Well, first and yeah. foremost, I think whenever they say that they've got a story trailer coming, whoever is making the game, I don't expect a lot of gameplay. So the people that were complaining about that, I don't really feel because it was a story trailer. It's exactly what you would expect. Mm -hmm. um, that said, this particular flavor of Star Wars is not my favorite. There were quite a few kind of Disney Star Wars nods in there. There were references to Solo and Canto Bite is a reference to Last Jedi. And I'm still of an age, a seasoning if you will, that still prefers my Star Wars to have fewer rather than greater Disney components in it. And even when I buy my Star Wars board games or whatever else I'm doing in the Star Wars universe, it's still always a bit annoying to get some of that Disney trilogy stuff in there. Uh, and so when I was watching this trailer, I was getting a Disney Star Wars vibe and I was also getting kind of a young adult novel vibe. There's a lot more kind of um, goofiness that I was expecting for this. And so I wanted to give Jedi Survivor another try because I thought that was a little bit more the tone that I like in my Star Wars, a little bit more adventure-y. Uh, and so I did do that, but I don't hate it. The, the stuff online about the character design of the main character and uh, of some of the other stuff that we see going around, the pricing. I, I'll tell you the same thing I tell you about every Ubisoft game. Don't buy it day one, you're an idiot. I will be that idiot probably for this game. Uh, as I so often am for Ubisoft games, but the Ubisoft game will be on sale for some ridiculously low price, like a month after it's released. So yep. if you don't like the pricing or the structure, I don't blame you. That's up to you. Only you can say the value of your dollar, but it will be lowered very, very quickly. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it. I'll have to wait till I play it, but I'm, I'm definitely heartened by what I saw. Um, Young adult novels, there's a lot of great young adult novels. And in fact, uh, Disney writes a few of them that are really good. Um, the High Republic has young adult novels that uh, have kind of that like goofiness. It's a vibe. And less, but it's a vibe and I, I don't I don't mind it as a vibe. I think you can you can have good young adult novels. And I also think it's what Star Wars does best. I mean, Star Wars is a kid's property of uh, you know it, that's that's kind of what they've always done uh well and i think it's where disney uh puts them in kind of like a kids to young adults uh area i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think the the silliness goofiness uh wacky galaxy adventures i mean that's that's sort of star wars in a nutshell um so i, I don't have a problem with that um i'm interested in the planets they chose uh the planets they chose are all related with like the underworld of star wars right so mm. kajimi is uh which makes sense the, given the theme right yeah yeah like kajimi is like the the frost planet with uh like the thieves quarter located there canto bite is like a corrupt you know casino uh, kind of uber capitalist center um and so i think it's a good mix of new stuff we haven't seen a ton of or haven't seen before at all uh, in the case of the new planet, and then also some nostalgia stuff for the people who are really only interested in uh, looking at the past when it comes to Star Wars, uh, and and you know going to Tatooine and stuff like that. These which I all, think kinda... everything they used from a movie is the past, Travis. True. It's just but a some, layer some of people the past. some people are much more uh, uh, strict on the rules of how far in the past they want to be contain Star Wars within and not not really look forward at all. Um, and I, so think I think outside uh, of the Disney trilogy's salt planet, everything else that they've introduced has been a copy of a lesser sort mm -hmm. of something that already existed in the Star Wars universe. Canto Bight is not a good planet. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, it's the one with the parking uh, infraction that leads off the Last Jedi's inciting mm -hmm. event. Uh, so, I mean, enjoy your time in the weird tuxedo casino uh, uh, in Star Wars. Kijimi is the one that where the, the Rocketeer got caught by a spotlight, I think. Uh, in in the rise of Skywalker. 
Um, on, wouldn't wouldn't a wouldn't a under kind of seated or belly whatever word you want to use here casino theme play directly yeah. into stealthy scoundrel missions? I mean, it could, but you had you had other planets that were available. You had Nar Shadda that's been in video games in Star Wars before. That's not on this list. You had Nar Shadda like is Wars very different vibes though. Theme. Nar Shadda yes, is I would a very say... different vibe. It's a vibe that I would have preferred over young adults go to Monaco. Yeah, and I th I think that some people are looking for um, maybe a more like cynical Star Wars, and I think uh, I'm not looking for more cynicism. I'm looking for less actually. This seems to be a very corporatized Disney approach to what they deliver with Star Wars right now, which is very much not a flavor of any kind, let alone a flavor that I like. Okay. I'm actually uh, surprised the Jedi series survived its pass through the J the Disney licensing engine as much as they did from based on what I see from this trailer, but that's why I went back to play those games. Yeah, Jedi Survivor is extremely good and also an extremely Disney, I mean, it leans into all of Star Wars, not just the parts that uh, 40 plus year olds want to want to pretend exist. Hey, so I appreciate love. that. Um, and I, 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 I think wish that... I could pretend that that was all that exists. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. you unfortunately, can always pretend. just wanted a few billion dollars. Yeah, you can oh, always I, I would love to be able to pretend that. I would love for there to be products that don't include any of the Disney crap. But unfortunately, that's not what Disney sells. Yeah, I'm glad um, because, uh, uh, yeah, I think Star Wars is better. Uh, I'm glad that you are glad, Travis, but I think it does <laughs> minimize their ability to reach a broader Star Wars audience. Well, I, I, I think I, I think I actually think the opposite. I think by just appealing to the uh, the elders of the world who only think that Star Wars was good in the 70s um, is a great way to minimize your audience. I think the Star Wars fan base is great it's vibrant there's all sorts of people that like it um i just i don't i don't agree with the idea of like clawing us back to just like let's just hang out at tatooine and stick our head in the sand and i don't want to just hang out at tatooine but i also um, don't want to hang out on canto bite so i mean well let's see why don't why don't we give well, it a chance Hope. well that that's what i was gonna you. say i feel like we're getting into a you guys are going back down to the uh uh, discussion of Star Wars as a as a universe and Disney and all this stuff that's we don't even know is necessarily related to game. None of us have played this yet. Correct, and I I think that as as a selection, whether or not you feel how however you feel about whatever your opinions are about Disney and how they've handled it, which I think we've been very clear on where we stand on that. I think the planets that they chose make sense, right? Canto Bite makes sense in the context of you want to tell a young now, adult it, novel feeling like scoundrel story that's a planet to include so I now think implementation and execution is key totally. obviously totally. um i think massive and ubisoft yeah. will do a great job with this i like both those studios i think so too and i the thing i liked about the story trailer is one let's talk about the character design i love her character design personally because it reminds me of how the characters looked in the og star wars films where they all looked like they were 70s actors with 70s haircuts um and her big like I don't know. Is that a perm? I don't know how to describe her like huge. <laughs> huge I got to believe, yeah. believe that she was designed based around uh, Sigourney Weaver in Alien. Like it That's is. What it, yeah. It kind of gives, it it gives like. me that vibe. And uh, to me, yeah. when you see a character in Star Wars, a human character that has like big poofy hair or like a porn stash, I'm always like, dude, that's like, that's, that's like classic space seventies Star Wars. And so I really appreciated that. Um, I'm interested in the sort of like, underworld heist story i'm not really sure what, where they're going for there but again it's a ubisoft game so i don't know how they're going to do on story sometimes they've got bloated games sometimes they've got gameplay issues um but i'm here for it man i'm going to play this game and i'm gonna, we can't I'm certify it, it yet we can't it certify ubisoft, it yet but we can't certify we it yet. but we we do know that ubisoft as a company is our mute dan oh i know yes no, ubisoft in general <laughs> Uh, in general, yeah. as a company, they are the bloat goat. Like they're the best <laughs> at making bloated games. Without, yes. can, you, can we, we pre-certify it? <laughs> He's trying to pre-certify it, <laughs> so we can, you know, pre-certified. We can expect Ubisoft to have some stuff to check off on their open world map. Yes, yeah, but yes. we haven't played yes. it yet, so I feel like we have to be a little bit more judicious with the goat effect. Mm. Fine, yeah. It's a bloat kid right now. We'll so see if Ubisoft it becomes a bloat a goat. I feel like deserves it. Like they're the original. But anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that's kind of what I'm worried, right? Like we 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 know how Ubisoft can get with some of these big, especially once they start talking about open world games, right? Because we know how they can get. 
Um, and we've talked about Valhalla endlessly on the show and, and games like that. Um, I didn't play a ton of Avatar. I think that, again, I, it seems people generally liked it. It's, it's a good game. You know, yeah. Um, so it seemed to be, you know, kind of take the source material well and kind of present something pretty pretty good in that world. So, and Massive is a super talented studio. I have a lot of faith in Massive as a studio. So um, I, I'm excited right to see what Ubisoft, they do. You're right that Ubisoft is not particularly strong in writing. They, yeah. They are, yeah. They're That's my kind worry. Of, they're kind of a blandish writing studio. I like their stuff, but it never really gets to the heights of emotion or plotting or anything else. So I expect that from Star Wars Outlaws as well. Uh, I just wasn't expecting it to be a, a a kind of young adult vibe. I You tell me you're making an underworld scoundrels game about heists and things. I expect a different vibe. So the story trailer was kind of eye-opening for me there. Uh, and it's not a vibe that I would prefer. So It does have, to your... To, to credit you there, Hogue, or not to credit, but to kind of agree with you a little bit, it does have the kind of scoundrel underworld vibe mixed with this flighty kind of goofy vibe at the same time. Now, That's you can Wars. pull that off, yeah. and it could be really fun, but we'll see. I think the jury's out on that one. Yeah, I would argue that that is that has always been Star Wars. Is like Even when they're telling like pretty serious topics, most of the time it's pretty goofy. It's pretty, you know, it, it involves. Well, you tell me you're working on work. on heist stuff, and I think of like Andor, and I thought Andor, Andor was the vibe I would prefer for this. And that's Andor is, I don't know if I'd count that scoundrels. Andor is like more, it's revolutionary. I mean, that's like the OG Star Wars definition. They have a heist war. in Andor. They have a straight up heist. But it's it is a war protest, you know. That's that's Star Wars. War, it's a war protest film, and I think Andor leans really heavily on that pillar of Star Wars's identity as like you know anti-authority, you know, anti-war rebellion stuff. And I don't think that's what this is going for. And I don't think that's really what you want when you're thinking of like scoundrels who are really out for themselves, and it's less about a cause and more about you know you just being selfish and a scoundrel. Um, what do you think about what? Sorry, what do you think about Nyx? So Nyx is the little creature, your kind of companion, and that seems to be a big play, not only in, uh, you know, obviously uh, Ubisoft games, but just games are really kind of leaning into the whole companion thing lately. It's a it's a thing yeah. people love, pet the dog type thing. Um, what it's do you think about that? The, yeah, Torgal forever. Yeah, I don't even, know. Yeah. I don't even know if it. I said Torgal forever. Torgal. Oh. Torgal. Yeah. Or, or Turgal. Is that the Torgal. turtle? T O R G A L. Not Torgal? not your Jedi Survivor guy, Torgal from Final Fantasy 16. Oh. We love Torgal in this house. Yeah. This house <laughs> stands with Torgal. <laughs> My house stands with Turgal, the frog from Jedi Survivor, <laughs> who's voiced by the uh the uh, Psychonauts 2 guy. Um yeah, the, uh so I, I think uh the 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 dog thing. First of all, that's not just a video game thing. It's also a Star Wars thing. It seems like every Star Wars, like a lot of Star Wars has to have like a companion or a cute sidekick or whatever. And so that's sort of just like a... Yeah, I mean, BB-8 became like... A huge yeah, BB, it's, it's got to be BB-8 or Baby Yoda or like there's got to be a cute thing that's hanging around. Jedi had BD-1, right? BD-1, yeah. Yep. Who, who, I, who oh, I think yeah. is awesome. You who know? is really yeah. cool. And they're, now they're yeah. selling him. You can actually get one that stands on your shoulder at uh, Disneyland. And I think um, that's, the, build, that's the fear, right? You see Nick's in the story trailer and it's like, yeah, that does very much look like the Disney movie. Oh, we need the we need the animal companion so that we can sell the plush. Not just Disney. That's also just been a Star Wars thing forever. Like R2-D2 is kind of the original. Okay. I mean, you, you can say Star Wars is a merchandising platform as well. It certainly has been. But when I see that in the story trailer, that's what I think of is I hope it is effective in the video game because it looks like something you want to sell me. Yeah, that, that was actually my yeah, point that's is that I'm, I'm worried that it's just sort of like a, hey, we want to have a cute thing that is part of the companion, even if that is, I would argue, a pretty hard part of Star Wars' identity. I don't know if it's necessarily a good choice for a video game, but it could also be the cool like, you know, Fable 2 dog where like it's super useful and has all these different... Uh, that's what I want to see how it's implemented. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping it's like that. That, yeah, that could be really too. cool. Yeah, Dan. I mean, you don't. You're not as passionate about your opinions as Hogue and Travis on Star Wars, but you are a Star Wars guy. What do you think about Outlaws? Sure. Have you watched these things? Are you interested? I, I watched the trailer. Uh, yeah, it's third person, right? Uh, over yes. the shoulder, Ubisoft, yes. Star Division Wars. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be 100% playing. He's going to be all over it. He, yeah. yeah, I, yeah Dan will play this game like, more than any of us. Yeah. I but I, 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 I don't care about anything really else. Except if it plays well and it's enjoyable and fun, then great. We'll see. Do you care about I mean, how much I, you're going to pay for this thing? Yeah, I saw that. Well, hold on. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. We saw that. Yeah, but yeah. I was I mean, trying to segue us. We I know. Do, I know. But we've got a couple of super chats. I know. We got a couple super chats I want to get to first. So. Yeah, it was. It looked. It, it's fine so far. I mean, I have no idea. I mean, me I, neither. Would I rather I'm be playing it as Jedi? Is going to turn out good? I don't really know. Yeah, I have no clue. Yeah, I would rather be playing. You know, I really like Survivor. I love playing as a Jedi. I mean, that's probably more interesting to me, I guess, in that world. It's you know, but you know, this could work too. I mean, it'd be fine. I was, it's fun. It. Sorry, thought you. No, were I was. Finished. I was really excited for you know that. What was it like the one seven one seven or whatever it was that Amy thirteen Hennig thirteen 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 yeah I can't remember yeah that's this fine. is yeah, very well, clearly was... not that that was definitely no no a no type of vibe yeah no uh, but still you know I mean it, I thought it was an interesting concept that they had going over there and maybe you know the shame will never see it but this could be good too I have no freaking clue you know no idea yeah. I, I don't you know I love Star Wars but I always go into it with like you know i just switch off the adult brain and then just go eh, let's see what happens and you know normally i'm not super disappointed when i do get disappointed it's funny it's with stuff like andor i'm like this is boring as hell i really want to just punch myself in the face like it's andor, just not exciting to me andor, andor is the best it. star wars thing disney has made andor <laughs> is fantastic Dan. it's completely I agree with that. What every I, other on, star on that wars we, on that we can agree though, but but yeah. it is a different vibe, right? Like you wouldn't show Andor to like the classic Star Wars audience of like young adults and kids. Like you're not going to be like, oh, you loved The Force Awakens? Check out Andor. That's totally right yeah. up your alley, seven-year-old. Like it's very different. Um, I think it's good. I mean, Star Wars can be more than one thing. Uh, sure. there, are, there are shows that are fully made for like kids in elementary school that I have watched because I insist on keeping up with the canon of Star Wars. Uh, and That's then only a few years ago for you. Yeah, and then there's fully adult stuff. That, Travis, like, are you telling me you've watched that whole Jedi Babies show? Yep. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it. Part of the canon, bro. I also read the middle school aged books, which they're pretty tough to get through, even though they're short. You can get through them really quickly. But like, you know, the stories are canon and some of the stories are good, but they, you know, they just change the vocabulary and the detail that they go into and they make the stories kind of like more lighthearted and you know, it's it's still good, but I, I mean, I can't keep this up forever. The whole <laughs> thing up with the full canon. It's not, you know, it's a limited thing. I, I think you're actually making a mistake, Travis, because I, I think you probably know the canon better than Disney at this point. I don't think they line up their books or their series across everything. I, I think if you knew the Star Wars canon, you would very much regret that statement because Disney has been the best custodian of their canon i've seen not only have they fixed a ton of historical star wars problems with their canon but they like anytime a new one pops up anytime like a fan is like oh this inconsistency they'll find a way to like write it into the canon and make it make sense kind of like the you know original star wars problem of like parsecs being a, a distance of measurement uh length rather than time and then they fix that like that sort of thing where where they they write a way for it to make sense in the universe. They're really good at doing that. I th I think they've been really tight on that sort of stuff. Yes, I've seen Tales of the Jedi. Uh, it was it, it's awesome. That that's also a very good thing Disney made. Uh, really like sh short story. They're also doing a uh, kind of a se effectively a season two of it that is focused on uh, dark side force users. That you uh, you have us way off track again, my friend. Sorry, dude. I just it's Star Wars, man. That's cool. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> cool. Great. Anyway, uh, to Dan, the thing I was going to say, Dan, back to you is um, I, that's what I was going to ask too. There's some people who really prefer to be the Jedi in the game, right? You're that kind of all powerful, not all powerful, but you know what I mean? You have powers. Um, whereas I think this is kind of cool in the sense of you're just going to be a normal person in this crazy world. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that to see how they pull that off. What was it? What were the games? Was it like Dark Forces or uh, you play as like a. Is it Kyle something? I can't remember. Oh, Katarn. Katarn, yeah. I mean, he eventually, you know, no spoilers for a game that's 80 years old, but, you know, eventually he comes like a Jedi guy and, you know, he, 
it, it was just kind of you, you could play as both. It was kind of fun to do. Thank God uh, that's not canon, but that, those yeah, games are super fun. fun. But Dark you know, Forces Two is called Jedi Knight. I don't know if it's a spoiler. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's when he goes and trains, doesn't it? Yeah, I remember all yeah. that. It, yeah, it was, that game was, that game was amazing. It, all Star Wait, Wars is it really? Games. Yeah. Jedi Knight, the second one, Jedi Outcast? There's there's full motion video in, in Dark Forces too. Absolutely there is. Oh, Dark Forces. Okay, I thought you were talking about a Jedi Jedi Outcast. Jedi, isn't that the sequel? Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast? Yeah, Jedi Knight 2 is Jedi yeah, Outcast, a.k.a. Big. Dark Forces 3. But Dark Forces Two <laughs> is Jedi it. Knight. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I do the, the, and then and then after that, there's Jedi Knight Three. Jedi. Yeah, they Academy. just put Jedi Knight and Forces in they random. Just, they put so orcs. it's so random. But uh, yeah. Jedi Outcast, the multiplayer is also surprisingly good. We're off track. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, Ains, you could take us through the rest of what you want to talk about. But all I wanted to add <laughs> to what Dan said is that I am not beholden to being a Jedi. I don't even like being a Jedi as much as I would rather have a blaster and be hiding behind a box. So that's yeah. one of the reasons why I, I I had hoped for a different vibe from this game, but I'm still gonna try it. I like Ubisoft, I think, more than the rest of the panel usually. So yeah, you're usually pretty high on them. Yeah, it'll be I a like game them. that I enjoy. Yeah, I don't. Their their egregiousness with uh, the you know plotting and open world stuff doesn't bother me as much as some because I just ignore it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like once I get bored of doing something, the game I'll just stop well, doing. It. I still have too. fun in their games. They, they, they've done it so much that they've kind of perfected it. So they kind of <laughs> know exactly how bloaty they are, and they just kind of lean into it, and I respect that because they yeah. do it well. If you're going to be bloated, do it well. Be the bloat goat. Okay, <laughs> yeah, can, you imagine if, if, can you imagine if Outlaws <laughs> is actually like the size of Valhalla? It'd be insane. I mean, I would. Yeah, it would be. Uh, oh be my amazing. god! I don't know. I don't know. I, honestly, I that that I I want to spend that much time in the Star Wars universe, and I probably yes. will. But that scares me a little bit. Kind of oh. like the Star Wars MMO. Like I I got so deep into the uh, Swotor MMO, dude. Like Kotor. oh. All right. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Swotor. Swotor yeah. Swotor, that dude. Yeah. That that MMO. Like I've played every single storyline in that game all the way through. I got deep into that, and that's not even <laughs> canon. It's not even canon. Um, that's, that's just that's just for me. <laughs> just for me. <laughs> Let me hit these super chats time. real quick. Catch up here, Volkus. Uh, Volkus, ten dollar Canadian on uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Show me the game or don't show me anything. Hated the trailer. That's I fair. heard this from some people in the community of like you know it was all cinematic, right? So they're not showing all trailer. what you're actually doing. Yeah, they say story trailer, and there was gameplay from last year, but I would have liked some updated gameplay and environments, and at least see something in that vein. I'm no sure doubt. you will get it very soon. Well, yeah. rem a reminder: I told the people I was talking to about this is that remember they have Ubisoft Forward or UB Forward in uh, on June 10th, right? Which is you can absolutely bet they're going to show this game off like in full at that event. It's going to be their biggest game of the year, I'm sure. <clears throat> so. Volkus, thank you. Shoosh. Shoosh with the $10. Alan finds another page. It's a manuscript of an art house film about Desmond having in a relationship with the Animus. Alan sees Paramount logo in a field signed by his own hand. Alan screams. <laughs> this is the Alan Wake 2 I wanted. Shoosh is great, man. Oh, shoosh. oh my God. That's hilarious. Shoosh, great. thank you very much. That's fantastic. Well done. Oh. Um, Shush follows up. Ah, oh, someday we will get the Star Wars game that is not about Han soloing or outer rimming. I'm not sure about that last one, but uh, outer right. rhyming, and that's rhyming, yeah. But mm -hmm. is point it? made. You sure? Point made. Rhyming spelled wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, that's that is what he was going for. <laughs> uh, I mean, is outer so rimming? his his problem is that he wants to be in a core world. He, you I know, don't, Nandor, don't know. that guy that gets to be the Galactic Emperor's auditor, he wants to be that guy. Got it. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, just life on Coruscant. It could be just like a, a slice of life simulator. Be it's cool. like the Stanley Survival Parable, scene. but in a Star Wars yeah. scenario. Just yeah. making a farm, you know? Yeah. yeah. I want to be, um, I want to be like a farmer on Alderaan, right? Like during episode four. You want to uh, be blown up? Know. Yeah, I want, I want to spend a game where it's like, uh, it's like Stardew Valley where you're like building, you know, a farm and stuff like that. And then as you're doing that, you're just in the sky. You just see a, a 
the Death Star slowly come into view. I want that to be. <laughs> it's a just game. a time a countdown. <laughs> yeah, it's a countdown like Majora's Mask. <laughs> uh, Shush, thank you. Appreciate you. Don's in the house. Don with five dollars. Thank you, Don. Good afternoon, Big Cass. Rebirth is done. Dragon Dogma Two is ongoing. Debating trying for the Rebirth Plat. I have remakes, Don't but do it. it's rough. <laughs> That's it. Mm. Uh, by the way, speaking of bloat goat, is Rebirth certified? Uh, Rebirth is certified bloat. Oh, definitely. But I'm, I'm not going to certify it with a goat as of this point. I will say that the ending is Killing me, some, of the, some, of the, some of the middle I mean, chapters. Dude, the entire game is like a, it is literally a small section of another game that they turned into a huge game that is powered out with the mini games. I don't, if that's not a bloat goat, I don't know what is. That's crazy. <laughs> I think they could have done better to earn goat status. But I'm still working through the game. I love that we're gatekeeping our bloat goat. <laughs> That's yeah. great. We got to make. I mean, we can't just use it willy nilly. You know, it's got to be. Yeah. We, don't we don't want these developers. We don't want these developers to just be making long games to earn the bloat goat title. Yeah, these this is this is a prestigious title. award. Yeah, you gotta you know you gotta earn it. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I think Hogue may change his tune. I, I feel like two months from now he's gonna be like, play it, play it. Rebirth is bloat goated. I am enjoying Rebirth, but there are certainly sessions where I did not have as much fun. <laughs> Listen, we just have different, different definitions here. We got to really kind of set it out. Like, what is the bloat goat? You know, yeah. what, is, what, what, what constitutes a bloat goat is just lots of bloat. I like that the non-lawyer is trying to set up a statutory framework for bloat We, can, <laughs> we yeah. can have can a smaller, that shorter part? version that's just a bloat kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's I just got, bloaty. I got some fat kid picks. <laughs> Of myself when I was like five years old, I was a huge little monster. <laughs> I just, like, just photoshopped me like you know with a big Dan giant bloat goaded in my face. Yeah, yeah. All right, outlaws. Let's talk about how they're selling this thing. So, um, so this uh, you know kind of created waves, and I don't know why because Ubisoft does this with pretty much every game, but here we are. Um, so normal game is seventy dollars, as you would Wait, expect nowadays. Just because they do it all the time doesn't mean you can't not like it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, gold version of the game, $110, so $40 more than the base game, and the game does have a season pass. According to the press release, the season pass includes two expansions. One is called... Oh, excuse me. Two expansions, which are yet to be named. Um, a Jabba's Gambit, quote, exclusive mission at launch, and the Kessel Runner character pack, cosmetic pack. So cosmetics, an extra mission, and two future expansions, which they have not described to date, along with the dreaded and Travis uh, goaded three-day early access, which Wait. I believe they've done for most of their pretty games. Much all of their stuff, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, and that's the price they want you at, right? I mean, this is standard kind of economic modeling. They have a middle range price. That's where they want you aimed at. And they have a stupid yep. price. Uh, for so that you can feel better about their middle range, hundred and ten dollars, one hundred percent. So but, the ultimate is one thirty, and the only additional stuff you get are some more cosmetics and a digital art book. Yep, and that exists to make you feel better about spending one hundred and ten dollars. But that is yep. the kind of thing that I have done for Ubisoft titles, and I think mostly Ubisoft titles, but other games that have the kind of what used to be a hundred dollars, right? This was the hundred dollar level. The it's gonna buy another game, ten. Yeah, the complete game, full season pass. This is exactly where it would be trending with a $70 base game price. So there's nothing that bothers me here. I don't love spending 100 bucks on a video game, and especially when you have to incentivize me on things I don't know what they're going to be like when they finally release. But Ubisoft has earned a certain amount of trust for me in terms of delivery on these season passes because they do tend to give weird stuff in their expansions, right? You think about Far Cry and the weird things they add to Far Cry games. I really enjoyed the Immortals game that they released with the kind of Breath of the Wild Greek mythology uh, game. And they had DLCs that took you into, I think it was Chinese mythology. And they had one that made it a top-down game that was like a Diablo adventure. And so you do get interesting experiences from their season passes in general. So this looks normal to me. And the internet likes to whine about things. Let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, it is, you know, it is expensive. <laughs> we don't know what the season pass is. Um, but goat. I mean, again, <laughs> wine goat. But I mean, to, to your point, Hogue, I will give Ubisoft credit in the sense of they do support their games, right? Like you do get ongoing content that is well delivered typically. 
Um, I look at something, Travis, we joked about, well, not jokes, we both reviewed it a couple years ago, but is uh, uh, Riders Republic. Still getting updates, man. They're still adding content to that game. And it's like, if you're a Star Wars fan, which obviously many people are, if these expansions are good and they continue to add more to the world or what we don't know what it looks like, that's the only thing I don't like is we don't know what the expansions are. But I have pretty solid faith that Ubisoft, based on their prior games, will continue to deliver content. And I don't think that's I mean, that if bad. they can continue to support Skull and Bones for a year, which they have apparently committed to, I have no doubt that the Star Wars game will definitely be supported. I don't have any problem with the uh, with the people being upset about this, though. Uh, it's a lot of money to ask for. Um, it's well above kind yeah. of market standards. Um, and also the early access thing is a, a, a so con. Good. I mean, it's a scam. That whole thing is crazy. The whole not saying the actual release date, charging people for playing a couple of days early. Like I, Xbox that, does that now too. Everybody does it. And it, it is yeah. an annoying practice that I think we should call out every single time. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people to continue calling out practices that they don't like because often what happens is that if they keep doing it, eventually you start to hear the argument from people of like, oh, well, this is normal. Why are you mad? Don't let these things become normal. They don't have to. And I'd say if there's a practice you don't like, it's totally within your power to scream up about it every single time, just like you did the first time you saw a company do it. Well, complain um, about it if you want, but understand that like everything else we talk about, the market will answer one way or the other. 100%. And if there are more Ricks than Travis's on this, then you'll continue to see it. And I'm the enemy there. If you hate it, I'm sorry, but I will buy it <laughs> because I think it's worth the value for me. Totally. Sure. And I, I think there's an, there's an argument to be had on both sides, Hoag. So I'm not necessarily putting myself in the camp of like, this is too much money for a video game. Uh, video games are extremely expensive and getting more expensive all the time. Lots of people have you know, shown data that we're charging too little for games. Uh, that said, I I always side on on the consumer on these things. I tend to of just like, look, they they're telling you, they're trying to tell you what they think it's actually worth. Um, but again, it it all comes down to who buys it. That said, I think the early access thing is just a bad business practice and a lie. More importantly, and you so I, it I would scam, like. But for me, from from the perspective of the outside person who isn't getting early games all the time to review or otherwise. There's nothing I'd rather spend money on than getting the game I want to play earlier. Yeah, but you're not getting it earlier. You're getting, getting it, it earlier. You're getting the day at no. The people who pay less are just getting it late. You're getting yeah, it on time. You're just looking at it philosophically it's differently. Magic. It's the same way. No, it's, it's, the same it's thing. It, the, one of the, one of them is a lie though. Saying that it is early access <laughs> is a lie. It's not but early. You, this is the equivalent of saying that. When a game downloads to your PlayStation or your Nintendo Switch or whatever, and it's not available for four days because that's when the release date is so that we can meet the needs of our brick and mortar resellers that you should be allowed to play it right then because it's a lie that you can't play it for four days because the game's already on your damn system. No, if there is if there is a release to the general public where people can buy it, that is the release date. If they can buy it and play it that day. That's the release date. And then any day after that is gate kept access based on your willingness to pay more money. But, it's a bad practice and the terminology is a marketing manipulation, but the, the term is a lie. It's not early. It just isn't. Okay, what, what should they call being able to play your game before you would otherwise get a chance to play it? They should call it the regular release and then the late release they should call delayed access. Because that's what it is. <laughs> they should call of it. Of course, they the won't poor. because it's market. Sorry, but that sorry is what it is. Poor. It's the, it is delayed access on the person not willing to play. It is not early access for the person willing to play. They are playing it on the day the game came out. That's the economy yeah. edition. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's risk yeah. reward, right? You're spending that money to get it uh, early, and you're spending it before you otherwise have the ability to know what the game is like. And so they're they're rewarding the people that are giving them the most trust in the product that they've made. Yeah, and they're punishing the people who uh, aren't. You know, you say punishing. Like, if you risk less, you get less reward. That's how I don't think the it's world a risk works. though. The game is out. You're gonna. The, there's also reviews already out. Like the my my point is that it's not it's not early access, and people. Th this is a a bad practice on its face for the consumer, and I hope people reject it. I really do. I really do. I, well, they're not going to because there's nothing that's sold more 
better in terms of data analytics than early access. And that makes sense to me, right? There's nothing I want more. Probably right. I don't want a different jacket for my character more than I want to play the game early. Then make it 10 bucks, right? Make it $70 and I'll pay you three for three extra Well, it's days. $0. It's just the season pass price with the base pass price. What if I don't want the season pass? <laughs> you know, give me more options because i guarantee you i guarantee you when you get that game it's going to have a monetized store that you can pick out five or six different things for whatever you know ubisoft credits that it probably you will because for. ub will have some yeah. kind of daily 100 percent or an xp like boost Street. yeah or map boost or xp boost or whatever they will monetize the hell out of that single player game and you're already doing it beforehand you know give me the option then let me pay three extra bucks or maybe pay a buck a day or whatever for my early access. It's about I'll tell you from a legal a perspective, they actually can't attach a price to the early access because they don't know if their servers will go down and they'll have some other problem. Well, that's dumb. That's why yeah, it's bundled. I've, I've, seen, I've seen that before where some people uh, pay for the early access. That's like the selling point and then the servers will come on late. And so what do you do? Do you delay the game an extra day for the normal people or you just say hey this is part of your risk in your terms of service when you buy the game is that early access may not include the full 72 hours or whatever we said we'd give you what happened um, with suicide squad didn't, didn't they have issues at the beginning yeah, i'm sure it does yes with, with and they uh they they credited uh some players oh, for that seems, i get why they're doing this it's an easy way to kind of artificially raise the price on your game and i think there's probably a strong economic argument for games being too cheap and i i think this probably will win i think you're probably right hogue because it's just it's blown up so quickly and it seems like the market is already kind of forgetting that this is unusual and not the way we used to do things me me specifically i would just be a lot happier if they would stop doing some of the manipulative stuff that i think they do like saying that the release date is on the date of the normal one and then there's also some review things where you know, they'll be like, oh, our release date is the 30th. It actually comes out on the 27th uh, if you're willing to pay a little bit more. And then they'll say, so reviews are going to come out, you know, the day before release, 29th, after millions of people have already bought the game. Uh, and I don't say that because, oh, I need to have early access or I need to make oh. everybody know that I played it first. It's because it's taking away from the consumer if they can't see how their peers feel about the game before it comes out. Um, and it, it just it's just shitty. It 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 they're they're data analytics driven company i mean like that is what these prices are they've got the three levels so that you can aim at the middle level they have an immediate drawdown on the price like two weeks three weeks four weeks on they are mm -hmm. they are as aggressively they, they probably have 16 economics people working behind the scenes on all this stuff because that's how this looks if you're in an economics class if you were to perfectly label exactly how much utility people get out of a game product this is they're trying to match that curve precisely and is that not fun for people that want to get $100 out of their $70? No. And is that not fun for people that will never get $100 out of this product? No. But it doesn't it doesn't offend the conscience of the court to me to look at. And, and as far as what Ubisoft has always sold, uh, at least in the modern era, the $100 version of the game, the gold for Ubisoft games, didn't include early access before. So I can only do that as an addition to what I used to purchase from Ubisoft games. Let me let me ask it this way. Let me pose a different question, um, Travis. Primarily for you, as you're kind of arguing this from the side of you don't like this uh, paid early access. So we talk a lot about um, the cost of game development, right? How how do developers stay afloat, and you know that type of thing, revenue, and all those things, right? So do you think this is is this a way that Ubisoft can fund? larger development is this a way well maybe not ubisoft this is a way developers can fund kind of uh additional revenue in a game that they feel is less egregious than say like single player microtransactions right like if they have 50 percent of their audience that is willing to pay say ten dollars just in a bundle here for early access does that a better proposition than saying okay everyone gets it the same day but we're going to have single player microtransactions and other stuff or loot it boxes depends you know what i mean yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I think it depends on the nature of the microtransactions. I'm not a big fan of like the time savers model where you know you get double XP in Assassin's Creed Odyssey if you put <laughs> which $10. this will probably have. Uh, yeah, we, we yeah, which this will probably more. have. Um, yeah. and and it's it's because uh, I think that actually has an adverse effect on game design where now you're designing the game to be 
uh, twice as grindy because everybody's going to want to buy that upgrade. You know, you're, you're incentivized to make the game boring, essentially. Uh, and then there's also the, as a reviewer, they often give us the version that has everything unlocked. So then we're not experiencing yep. the game like some of the people are going to experience it, which is why whenever I get like a all-inclusive code, I just don't use it. I wait until after my review is done and then I use it um, so just so that I can experience what it's like being like a non-premium member before I write my review or whatever. Um, I don't think like cosmetics and, you know, getting different stuff, like stuff that like Fortnite does. I think if that is present in a single player game, it's a free to play game. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But if, if it were present in a Ubisoft game where you can just like get a horse that's on fire in Assassin's Creed, I don't view that as in terror as very terrible. It doesn't affect you know the gameplay or whatever. Some of the other stuff they sure. do, where you can straight up buy like a weapon that's stronger or or materials yeah. you need to craft yeah. and upgrade or whatever. I think that stuff does kind of suck. Um, Agreed. Really, if they would just change the way that they, it's really just the whole idea that it like that it is early access. It's really the lie that annoys me more than anything. The like the way that they're marketing it, and I get they're doing that because the one I proposed of calling it delayed access is a marketing nightmare, but. That is what it is. And it's, it's, it just, it really is that, that I can't really get around. Um, so, and also the companies doing it are the ones that I don't really view as being in trouble, right? Like Microsoft, I don't, do they need to do this, this sort of thing? Cause you never see hey. it on like some struggling indie studio. I've never seen a struggling indie studio go, Hey, our game's $40, but if you buy it early access, it's 50. Right. And so it's not really even being done by the the companies that seem to need the help that's being done by mega corporations that uh, are just trying to increase their profit margin. And so for me, it kind of, it strikes me as like unwarranted greed. Most of the hey, time, Ubisoft may be an outlier to be fair, because they seem to be kind of in trouble from time to time, but Microsoft is not doing too well, man. They need every penny they can get. All right. Yeah. yeah those poor guys, those that's poor guys, you become a mega company. I mean, you don't just you know, <laughs> give stuff away to people. 100%, nothing. but I don't have to like mm -hmm. it, man. I don't, I don't understand like what I don't your like position is, Travis, I, in terms of what would you mm -hmm. rather see happen here? That, that three days early access would just not exist? It would just be crossed off? Just be $110 for the season pass with the game? I mean... Uh, what, obviously, what is, I would is, pref obviously, I would prefer if they would just remove the, the three-day early access thing. But Okay, but the, gonna... the release date isn't moving three days up. It's just staying on the same date. So they just remove that perk. Are, are you better off? Are people the better off? The release date is three days up. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but that won't. That's is. not. That's not what's on the table. I, I think Hogue is saying that there are going to be people who are going to buy the gold edition no matter what, right? To those people, they're getting more benefit. So, are they actually better off if you just remove the early access? Or I think Hogue's arguing they're actually yeah. worse off they're, because they're, getting, they're, they're they're only getting more access or be, better benefit because you're deciding that they do. If you were a company and you wanted your game to come out three days earlier, you could just do that. The fact that you're charging them money to change your release date is crazy but, to me. But he, but but he's they're not technically because you're just paying for the season pass, right? So totally you're paying for the so, season pass. This is like a bonus. This is like so, oh, hey, exactly. You also so the, like a pre-order bonus. The, exactly the point that it's just an incentive to buy the more expensive version, and you're not actually charging for the early access. Totally fine with that. It's more the the term that it is early access. We all know that it really isn't. It's just the release date. So this is more the release of a, date uh, is three days early. That's when you can buy and play. Well, the game. That's what Hoke said at the start. This is a philosophical kind it's of. It's a pure yeah, semantic yeah. argument, and yeah, and it bugs Travis. I don't blame him for being bugged. I just don't think that the other baseline is that this game comes out three days early for everybody. That's not what happens. Totally. They make it a pre-order bonus again. It's it's not early. It's just the day they picked. So there's not, it's not like it, oh, if you don't pay this extra money, we're going to have to have three more days of development. You're just choosing a day on a calendar and then going, or we'll do it three days early. So you could do any one of those. The consumer wouldn't know if it were early or late, if there was only one date, right? It would again, I go back to, I have a ton of games that download that I've pre-ordered that download a week early that just sit on my system and don't let me access them for an arbitrary amount of days until I'm allowed to. I don't feel hurt by that. Uh, I don't feel like the game actually released what it downloaded to my system if they would just let me have the license key. So I, I guess yeah. I don't understand what you would change about this particular situation. I would certainly change the terminology. I would not call it early access. Well, and you know that that's not, not going to happen because there, of you, course. you still are marketing a product. But it is a lie. Yeah, <laughs> It is a lie. All right. It's a we, framework we... that is more advantageous to the seller than the buyer. 
Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent and a lot. Yeah. Also. We've we've hit our wall um, on this topic. I think. Yeah. I think we have. Yeah. Um, I don't think I will... people's version of the game is going to sell a whole bunch of copies. Oh, totally. No, I, I, I'm, I was not, I'm not say, arguing right? it's not going to do well. I can still hate it though. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Let, for sure, for sure. Uh, let's not forget that Valhalla, as much as we joke about it being the bloat goat, and you know, it had the same kind of structure and all these things. It's made over a billion dollars in revenue. Um, Valhalla's a good game. It's, yeah. it's blandish, yeah. but it's a good game. But that's a, remember, that's a single player game, right? That's my point is that you, when you start to talk into the B's in earnings and revenue in games, it's usually these live service games that have this c constant income, right? They're just continually earning money. Valhalla is a single player Ubisoft game generated over a billion. So they well, know and, what they're doing to Hoag's point in terms of economics in that sense. Oh, uh, they, they are clearly the one that is most engaged with kind of economic theory on how to sell these things. Um, and I will say that they've earned re reputationally, as I mentioned earlier, because you look at something like Valhalla, and I love the expansions that came out to Valhalla. The, the Ireland expansion was probably my favorite part of Valhalla. Awesome. It was really good. Yeah, I like it. Well, yeah. that's Outlaws. Obviously, we will see more. Uh, I don't know if we'll see more before June in their, their big Ubi Ford event, but obviously we'll be talking about it more before mm -hmm. release. And I think it's one of those, I won't say rare games, but one of those AAA games that all four of us will be playing. So that'll be cool, at least. Uh, I'm sure I we'll have... Brother, I think my brother, the game dev, is in the chat defending game pricing. For anybody that's interested, live in Where the chat at? right now. <laughs> oh, there Comment. you go. Okay. Let's get him. Let's get him. Sorry, Thomas. Let me find you. Gotcha. All right. The truth is game pricing is completely underpriced compared to its value and expense. And devs are going to do whatever they can to get more money out of their games without increasing the base price. Of course they are. This is the game. Yeah. I think everybody go. knows that. And I think that's From part a dev. of the argument here um, is that. Like, I like his follow up here. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i, I think i think ever like most of the data i've seen from devs is that games don't cost enough right and i totally i i am totally empathetic with that um with that argument i just you know you don't have to lie about when your game's actually coming out to make it a little bit <laughs> I don't think really a all right all right all right all right we get it yeah. travis we get it we get it so looking forward to that early access for outlaws but we can move on um we <laughs> <laughs> I'll be so playing triple... it a couple of days before Travis. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. I think I'll probably get a code sent to me. But well, yeah, that, I won't right, be we're not all in it. such privileged positions. That's true. That's true. Some of us have true. to pay for this. That's. Yeah. I know, and I and, and and how ironic is it that I'm your champion of against <laughs> it, and I'm not even the one it affects. It doesn't even affect me. Uh, <laughs> and and the I'll nice thing, it. honestly, when you review Ubisoft games, which I've reviewed several, um, they send you the ultimate edition. They so do. You get, always. You get the full bundle. Yeah. And the reason they do it is because they want the reviewer to have the best possible experience with all the knickknads <laughs> and bobbles and XP boosts, and it's well. It's, the only thing I would say though, you in. Which one did I review that had that? Maybe Val no, Dan reviewed Valhalla. I don't remember, but one of them, like the the XP boost thing for your single player, that's a separate. Like that's not part of the ultimate edition. Was it, it's was not. it uh, Watch Dogs Legion? Might have been Legion. Yeah, I reviewed. Uh, I reviewed Far Assassin's Cry Six Street as Odyssey well. Definitely had one, and I think yeah. no, no, they they had it, but I don't think it comes with the bundle. Like it's an extra oh, it thing you have to you're pay right, for. You're right. Yeah. Oh yeah. That yeah. It was when one hundred and thirty isn't enough. Yeah, I mean that's not enough. Come on, you got to buy extra stuff. Um, you know the most egregious thing is that there's no actual collector's edition for this game. That worth hundred thirty dollars is digital bullshit. All right, where is yep. the Nyx plush or something? You know, give me all the I don't think there are a lot of statue-driven buyers out there, Ains. I think you you are on a a smaller <sighs> island. That's it is true. surprising yeah, for Star Wars though, because Star Wars people will buy whatever. You've well, Far Cry them. Six had the flamethrower, like you know, collector's edition yeah. for two hundred bucks. That yeah, sold out like in two days. We might still have something. Need, uh, I don't know if we need more landfills filling up with plastic. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a fan of this model. Yeah. Give me the digital now, stuff. Bear in mind, we'll be paying stuff, for this from a company that you know said you really don't own your digital library. So, which is true, you know, you don't know you don't own any of your libraries. 
Spoiler alert. No, we're not doing this. No, I'm moving on. No, 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 no. Triple I initiative. Uh, So we got a showcase this week of uh, (laughs) over 30 titles in less than an hour for a whole bunch of different indie games. Um, You know, this is uh, this is really cool. This was a collection of a bunch of studios coming together. Um, you got some pretty good announcements here, and I'm not super familiar with a ton of these games. I know that in our Discord, the it went nuts when Slay the Spire 2 was announced. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's Slay several the people on our Discord who claim, and I think rightfully so, because I know the opinion on Slay the Spire is very, very high. That it's Slay the Spire, the first one, yeah. yeah, is is you know incredible. So yeah, this is of- great. It sort of spawned all of the card-based roguelike type games that have come out, like uh, Monster it's, Train. It's, it's a genre like maker, and I think that's one of the yeah. reasons two doesn't excite me as much as it could have, right? Because I'm I've already played fifty versions of a Slay the Spire alike, so they're going to have to really wow with whatever it is. They like come they're going to have to kind of reinvent or kind of bring something new to the table. They are. They're going to have to really think through what it is that would make me happy. Fair enough, fair enough. So Slay the Spire 2. I mean, there was a whole bunch of announcements here. I'm not going to talk about all of them, obviously. We do have kind of a small summary of this on uh, SG.com, SeasonGaming.com, if you want to check it out. A couple of the other ones that really jumped out, though. So we saw more of 33 Immortals, which is Mm -hmm. uh, you can sign up for the open beta of that right now. Or closed beta, excuse me. Yeah, it looks very cool. Uh, We got Hyper Light Breaker, the sequel to Hyper Light Drifter, right? Am I remembering correctly? Hyper Light Uh, Drifter? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, Hyperlight Breaker, so the sequel to that. We saw a little more Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, which is a very cool looking game. Been in dev for a while now. Yeah, my favorite a couple times. It has, yes. Uh, my favorite announcement was another Prince of Persia. The Rogue Prince of Persia is actually the title, uh, which is a roguelite um, Prince of Persia coming here in a few months. So I'm really excited about that one too. Yeah, we're pretty lousy with Metroidvania type games this year. Um, like the Prince of Persia, this one looked cool. Zhao, mm-hmm. I've talked about before, being excited about this month. Fair. Um, and I, I think that people that got excited about this had good um, experiences with Dead Cells, which is a game I really enjoyed when it came out. Mm-hmm. So I understand why people are excited about this one. I just might be Metroidvania it out by the time this one comes out. I don't know. Dead Cells gotcha. was cool. Dead Cells, Dead was, Cells cool. was. Yep. We got a V Rising, the legacy of Castlevania. Looks awesome. Um, uh, I want to talk about um, what what was the game that was announced? Uh, oh, Hyperlight Breaker. Did you guys play Hyperlight? Breaker? I, you you weren't even listening because I just talked. I just brought that up like a, little a bit. minute ago. I did. Yeah, zone zone I was I was well, responding to the comments. Go. Sorry. Did you You're play good. Hyperlight Drifter, Danes? Did you comment on that? Very briefly. I didn't finish it. Oh damn. Okay. That's like in maybe in my top five Souls like games. I really like that mm. game a lot. Um, nice. and uh yeah uh I, i'm really excited to see what hyperlight breaker is because it seems like it's maybe not kind of the same type of game like something really different so mm-hmm. i've not looked into it at all but i i, I haven't I thought, what they, I thought what they showed was really cool i also own the hyperlight drifter tabletop rpg so, <laughs> i don't know nice you know? it became a pretty popular indie you game to be a crow yeah. with a sword or whatever yeah you know indies but, do have uh, a more uh, broad base for their sequels and things. Hyperlight Breaker reminds me a little bit of like what they did with Risk of Rain, where it's like just mm. a completely different approach to somewhat similar subject matter. Mm. Uh, so I hope it's great. Um, I know that you didn't mention it, but Brotato is getting a little bit of yeah. Yeah. content. Brotato so, expansion. By the way, can I just say I love the phrase triple I because I immediately knew what they meant by that. It's yeah. like, you know, like the the kind of bigger budget, more fleshed out indies, uh, like indies yeah. with a with a pedigree, basically, like indie studios with a pedigree for making yeah. indie games. I immediately yep. got what that meant. Triple I love it. Keep using that. term. Um, yeah. Hoag, you mentioned Risk of Rain 2, too. That, that was in this showcase, Risk of Rain 2, Seekers of the Storm, which is, uh, I think, the next uh, expansion. There. I don't have all the details here, obviously. So that's a very different um, under- game than Risk of Rain 1, is what I meant, is that you've just got indies that say, okay, what if we did this in a completely different yeah. way? Yep. Uh, va- I did not realize this, and maybe I'm just not paying attention, but Vampire Survivors was part of this, announcing that it's coming to PlayStation. I was like, I didn't even know it wasn't on PlayStation. Yeah, Because it, it became such a big game last year. That's so. another genre starter. So, yeah. It is, Vampire yeah. Survivors now there's a whole... A cool game. There's a whole, like... Uh... Uh, what auto shooters, I think they're called, right? 
Uh, yes, I believe auto shooters is what stuck. There was a little time where they were called Bullet Heaven, which is terrible and didn't work. <laughs> oh, I kind of yeah. like that, though. Yeah. Auto shooters, I think, is a better name, and I think that is what I've seen more often in the descriptions. Which Brotato oh. kind of is, right? If I, if I, oh yeah, Brotato is a vampire survivors alike. An there auto you go. Shooter. Yeah. The one that I've uh, talked about we'll uh, several name. times is uh, Mouse, which just looks absolutely comical to me. Uh, it's not coming nice. out till next year, but if you've seen the the clip of this, this is like a 1930s Mickey Mouse, old school Mickey Mouse. Um, Black Whoa, and I didn't white. hear the word Mickey related to any of this. Yeah, yeah awesome. I gotta be careful. Like, We're the about lawyers to be in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was why? Oh, Steamboat, Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. Steamboat. Yeah, Willie. there we go. Not Mickey. Um, uh, so, but good. it's like a it's like a mature first person shooter in a 1930s style black and white cartoon. It's it I just call looks it hilarious. Cuphead FPS. <laughs> Pretty much. You, know, you have the white uh, gloves and a Tommy gun and. It's yeah. all cartoony. Yeah. Yeah. It looks, yeah, it, cool. looks it looks hilarious. This looks um, like a game Travis will be assigned to review, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> it almost it looks, certainly. it looks better than that. <laughs> hey, I review good games now sometimes. You do. You have hey, earned you know. your way up, my friend. I know. Yeah, I really have. Been, I've, been, I've been given some good assignments. And, and I've literally been writing to IGN saying it's bullshit. Get him I back know. on the on the nonsense. Me, me too. This is, Just for yeah. the record, every time that happens, everybody on the team is kind of uncomfortable and they're like, let's give them something random. But this year, the, the random games they've given me that they expected to be bad were good. Like Power World. World. Yeah. Power World was one of them. <laughs> Uh, there's a game I'm playing right now that I kind of expected was not going to be great, and it's I'm loving it. So yeah, I'm. Uh, it, it's been a a uh, an interesting year for me. He's loving it. It's a McDonald's game, folks. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I gave I'm it all away. I'm hoping they make live service Nerf Legends game. That's what I'm hoping. Oh yeah. God. Hey, maybe it'll be good. <laughs> Never judge the first game. You know. Look at this. My brother wants credit for the freaking Vampire Survivors games. He comes to me after Vampire Survivors is in early access and says, this is going to be gigantic. And yep. I'm taking competitive analysis of everybody in this space. And I say, sure, Tom. No, you don't have to hit a button at all. And <laughs> you just run around in a circle. I'm sure it's going to be huge. And so he's uh, he's now trying to collect his um, here. Did you did you let uh, Tom know that um, that game was made by a single developer and he is a single developer? Yeah. So what has his, he been doing with his time? His <laughs> services are currently contracted to uh, Zenimax Online. And uh, what okay. he's doing All with right. his time, he can't say to anybody. <laughs> that is true, but you are welcome to come on the big cast and talk about it, Tom, as an exclusive. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're ready whenever. Yeah, if you're first, done with your know. job, you know, if you don't if you don't like it anymore, come on yeah. to the big cast. When you when you're ready to break contract and go make your auto shooter before just after that day, come on big cast first and, and tell us yeah. what Zenimax is doing. That'd be great. Perfect. Yep. Um, but anyway, uh, triple I initiative. I love this. I hope they continue to do this and come together in this vein. They do have a website. There's not much on the website, but the, uh, the show you can watch in less than an hour had a ton of good games on it. And the actual YouTube, if you go to the actual YouTube show on the triple I initiative, channel um it's actually time stamped with every game that they showed so you can just kind of read through all of them and, and watch whatever two minute trailer you want to watch for that game so um it's it's on our oh, site you can you. find it but you can check it out it's really good, good job indie people it's good stuff yeah. this is, this people is the... that are always waiting for e3 there's a lot of these out there i like the wholesome games directs um wholesome games Triple is, I cool. is cool um yeah. so yeah there's a lot of good stuff to follow up on a lot of them appear in Hogs notes from time to time. So, <laughs> they do. Triple I initiative. Triple I yeah. initiative. Yeah. It's a really quadruple I. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't want to get into Ubisoft's business, you know. Yeah, was whoa, it, yeah. Wasn't it Microsoft that said that? The they're making the first quadruple A game. The, no, the, that was Ubisoft. Yeah. That was Ubisoft. Yeah. Oh no, no, say, you're thinking of the initiative. Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. They said yeah. it first. Yes. Back in the day, before that yeah. studio didn't make anything. Well, yeah, tr the true quadruple A is not making anything. So Skull and Bones, <laughs> quadruple yeah. A. Yeah, Skull and Bones is quadruple A. As Ubisoft said, I said the fourth A is aquatic. I said this. Yeah, <laughs> I think the fourth A was uh, just purely based on how long it took to make it and how much money they spent, which is not really a good metric for if it's a, you're into that fourth A. But, but seriously, people, play Skull and Bones. I mean it. I need you to. Thank you. <laughs>
I need, I need somebody to play I with. Need it. There's nobody out here. <laughs> I yeah. need this help. H- H- Hogue is pitching skill and bones. Like uh, if you start playing skill and bones based on my recommendation, then you'll be under my network. And then you're, you know, your coins will go up to me and then you can recruit people. And those like, are, yeah, he's, you. he's got to me. He said, yeah. first three, get me skull bucks. And then yeah. the first three that you recruit, get me skull bucks. So keep that's doing right. it. Yeah. Yeah. So pyramid scheme. All right. So that's all. Yeah. Pyr- yeah. Yeah. So, so this is, this is... a pyramid scheme. I will to nope. say I have, I have officially fully stopped playing skull and bones uh, because I ran out of stuff to do season one and now have more money than God. Uh, but Can we'll, I also we'll say see- that Travis's experience is not a match for my own, who's also put in 75 hours into this game. And wow. I'm not remotely near the numbers that Travis says. So I, wow. I am probably a better indicator of what your game experience with this will be like. I don't know what Travis did, but the fact that he's a multimillionaire with way too well, many... That's because he, he bought the double XP boost. That's what he does, you know. There's actually impressively uh, no way to imp- increase anything in the game using money. You only get cosmetics. Good. I think, he, I think he just it's, it's actually time. great. It's yeah, great. It's good. The, I actually think the systems in the game are really well set up, but we've talked enough about Skull and Bones. Nobody cares. Our we have not today. talked enough about Skull and Bones. <laughs> Come play Skull and Bones, people. It's great. We'll have the water's time. fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, the, water. the last thing I wanted to mention this week is around. Uh, I'm excited about this. I don't know if anyone else is, but Warhorse Studios, great uh, group of guys over there at Warhorse. They announced that the, uh, the kind of Full announcement of their next game will be this Thursday, April 18th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Everyone is obviously expecting Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. Um, yeah, and they they kind of leaked uh, a few years ago. That's what they were working on. They're a pretty small studio, but Kingdom Come Deliverance is one of those games that um, has had this long tail on it, you know, of people experiencing it. It's a really good game. I used to call it like medieval Very Skyrim. Good. Yeah, Shockingly it's awesome. good. Yeah, it's really fun, and you can find it. I think it's on Game Pass, but you can also find it really cheap. You know, generally speaking, they have the complete edition. Um, the complete check edition it out if you. Yeah, yeah. Very I cheap. mean, you can get you can get it, and it's 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 just a really well developed world. Uh, they did something really special with that game, so I would highly recommend it. So yeah, work on the lock picking. How about that? That's my biggest complaint of that game. It was so I bad. Mean, that I, game has it's a it's so a bad. mutt game, right? It's a little bit. But I think they updated it. Did they? Oh, interesting. Yeah, you're because we talked about that years ago, Dan. I think years that was ago. when you first played it. Yeah. I couldn't get past the main story because I couldn't <laughs> do the lock picking mechanic. So for those of you who've never played it. this game, <laughs> it is one of those games that goes for realism so much that it's actually frustrating sometimes, but yes. frustrating in a good way. For example, no. If your character can't read, whenever you look at a book or anything written, it will appear as garbled nonsense. And then as you rank up your levels of literacy, it'll start to be more intelligible, but still have a bunch of typos and backwards words and stuff like that. And then when you're fully fluent, you'll actually be able to fully read stuff. That's just like one example that I think really showcases just how committed that game is to like literate, you know, you're not literate by default, like you are in every other fantasy game. It's like, no, most people weren't. So you got to figure out how to read books. If you want to be able to read stuff. Yeah, and It's very fun. Died of some kind of weird disease they got from a rat, but you know, I mean, that would be a really <laughs> boring ass game. You know, it's I mean, great, they, dude. It's, there's it's, some it's stuff in that game, game is slow, like that time period, but it's designed yeah, really but, well for that time period. Like I just, I, I it, it's one of those things that kind of reminds me of Red Dead 2 where it's so immersive and true to to what you want out of like that period and that genre that I don't mind some of the slower pacing because it feels it feels like it fits well with that world. Yeah, so. agreed. There's there's one mission, uh, I won't spoil it, but there's a mission where you end up in like naked in a hot tub with like a a priest from the local town and it's just like some of the writing in that game it takes you in places you do not expect. I'll and tell you, I, I had a, I had a, friend, a lot more modern than you're giving the credit for. No offense. I had a friend walk in <laughs> with me playing that game and he did not know what game I was playing, but he just saw, oh, this must be a fantasy game because you're walking around castles and you have a sword and stuff like that. Yeah. And then he, he saw me talk to somebody in the game and the person goes like, is talking about just the world or whatever. And she goes, praise Jesus. You know, just like, and he was just like, did she just say Jesus Christ? And she, he, he was expecting like this fanciful lore with like gods, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, and it yeah. was just, it went for Jesus Christ. And he was like, 
what? <laughs> what the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was very funny. So you should yeah. play that game, and I'm excited to see the sequel. I mean, I know everybody; it's kind of worst kept secret, right? They're they're working on a sequel, so I hope I don't it's not it's called Deliverance Two. I, I assume you just use the word deliverance so you could have a different word there and keep the yeah kingdom going. come something yeah yeah I, I think it's probably gonna have a two hog kingdom I, come delivered no no it, it, <laughs> but 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 it might have a two you might be right Travis but the reason you have a subtitle to start your series is that you can change that word out and keep your branding totally um, how about kingdom come DiGiorno? <laughs> it's, it's not, not deliverance. deliverance. It's DiGiorno. <laughs> God, end the show. Yeah, I think that's going to go ahead and take us out. I will joke, uh, the one thing that annoyed me about them actually saying that they have the announcement formally coming is, for whatever reason, you know how, Travis will know what I'm talking about in particular, you know how with the site sometimes the SEO just gets cracked in your favor? So for like the past three years, if you Googled Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, Season Gaming was the first thing that came out. And now that they have their formal announcement, we're not even on the list because like all the major sites have just taken it over. I was like, oh man, that's a shame. <laughs> um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. I hope you enjoyed the banter today. We were all over yeah. the place as per usual. Um, friends talking been, about stuff. Yeah, just talking about gaming. It's fun. Arguing, Everyone hanging out with us. Also a form of love. Arguing is my love language. In case Travis and I are never going to agree on Star Wars, but that's okay. We can still be friends. Of course. Yeah. Um, right. actually in all seriousness I was joking with a couple other creators the other day that like the podcast out there I know we've said this but the podcast out there where like there's a panel and they just all echo the same thing over and over again like you know they all say the same thing and agree with it I'm like that's just so boring <laughs> like that's not like it's it's good to have uh, differing opinions on things and different viewpoints and you know just the way you look at things differently that's a good thing yeah, yeah. I think it's also quinoa. good for people to see. Yeah, we got quinoa chat over here. Come on. <laughs> That's right. Hey, quinoa is great. Have you tried it yet, Dan? No, I did <laughs> go to uh, like Costco yesterday and uh, saw a giant bag of quinoa. Uh, I took a picture of it that I could send you guys. Uh, nice. I, I do not uh, see myself buying a three pound bag of quinoa. but That's probably know. not the way you want to start with quinoa. Probably not. But uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll but it was a good you, deal. I'll some fire quinoa. I can't think yeah. of anything that you want to start with. At the three pound level, chocolate, yeah. uh, okay. beef. You already know you uh, like these things. I'm saying, like, yeah, as a matter. first time, but, a first yeah, time, yeah. But if somebody's never eaten more. chocolate, heroin, that's where I would go. Yeah, that's a lot. That's quite a bit. You know, um, you have no feel for how much heroin that is, Dan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a lot of heroin. I do. Well, you see, Hogue, I mean, it's I like, exactly. no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's go ahead and uh, start wrapping up. Sard, uh, Sard did have a question that I meant to ask you at the start of the show, Travis, which I actually forgot. So I have to apologize for that. I asked no to problem. see if she can put it in the chat right now and we can get to it just before the end. But I'll go ahead and start wrapping up while she's maybe typing. Um, so for SG side, not too much to mention this week. Um, I did want to mention No Rest for the Wicked comes out this week, Thursday, in early access on Steam. I'm so excited. No so... Um, Elu and I will both be, we're kind of combo covering that one. I'm going to do video capture. He's doing the written review. We're both going to be talking about it uh, and reviewing it, and we'll talk about it next week on the show. Uh, Witchfire, check that game out. It's very cool. It's in early access on Epic Game Store. I believe it's $40 in, Epic, in early access, excuse me. Um, but I'll be streaming it again this week and uh, look for my uh, kind of review and uh, kind of full thoughts on that in terms of its own early access uh, build here soon. And then I got a Fallout, um, a Fallout uh, kind of special thing to give away uh, this week in coordination with some of the other Xbox shows uh, related to the coins that I talked about previously. So just more to come on that. But um, I'll pass it over to you, Hogue, since Sard has not um, mentioned the thing yet. Oh, sure. Uh, well, I didn't put up any videos this past week. So the last time you saw my face was on BitCast. Thank you for watching BitCast, folks. Uh, but we were pretty busy in Hogue House, including talking to a stroke survivor support group at my old recovery hospital, which was very fun. I really enjoyed meeting all those folks. It is a activity that makes you reflective of everything that you've been through. So I have not been making as many videos. I've been doing some stuff with the law firm. I hope to make some more videos this coming week. Please check those out at YouTube slash Hogue Law if they exist. But thank you, everybody, for supporting me when I don't put up videos. So thank you, everyone. And that's all I got going on right now. I'm watching Fallout, hanging out, 
playing Suicide Squad and doing other things yes. very popular with all the hip kids. Play Suicide Squad. Um, yes, and uh, you know we've said it a million times, but uh, to Hoag's point, when uh, you have one of those weeks where you don't get videos up, uh, just watching these, thumbing them up, liking them, you know, the usual stuff we talk about does help an awful lot. So appreciate that. I do have the question for you here, Travis, that uh, uh, Sard asked last week. How does the Hoyoverse make the live service model look so easy when bigger studios keep crashing and burning? What are they doing that other people should learn from? So Couple this is about, could, um, yeah. what's the game? It's a Genshin Impact. Well, Honkai Star Genshin. Rail. Yeah, and Honkai Star Rail is their new game, uh, but both yes. of them have been wild successes. I think there's a few things they do well. Um, one is they are all in on the fact that they are making a live service game. They know exactly what they're doing. And so when they build their studios or their teams that work on games at the studio, they have uh, not just a content development team that's making the game, but they have uh, live service support teams that work on content around it. And I think that's always the most important thing when you're building a live service game is that you have the model internally to actually support a live service game. And they do have that. The other thing I think and they, they came have- they from the mobile side, didn't they? They came from the mobile side where that is the model, right? The model is like, keep the keep the game going, make more content, kind of put it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to, you know, keep, keep people playing. Not break everything. Not break everything and keep people engaged at some level. The other thing is I think their games appeal to a very wide audience because of the art style and the fact that they're easy to pick up and play. And uh, they also have the whole like kind of, we're going to get you addicted to this game thing where the gotcha model makes you want to keep you know opening those pods and so i think they touch some good some bad on in the live service in terms of you know there's that whole conversation of manipulation and should we have these loot boxes in our games that that uh, touch that addictive part of our brain um they definitely have that going for them um and then they also have the part where they just they're good at making games i also have to imagine that their um their engine allows them to pump out quests and missions and new characters pretty easily because they do it way faster than some other games out there um a lot of the games that crash and burn um they're they're so ambitious and it takes them forever to make content right like i can't imagine how long it takes to make a mission in anthem right or a uh we know that it takes way too long to make like a new map in destiny 2 uh, and they're just different types of games uh and i think uh you when you're making a live service game, part of what you your calculation has to be is how much am I macking myself into a corner on uh, how hard it is going to be to replicate this. And you have all sides of the, all parts of the spectrum to point to that. You have it's going to take forever, and we'll probably never actually come out with anything. To we can put out content every week. Uh, you know, Diablo Four is kind of in that in that vein of like they're really good at pumping out content. Um, and I think that that has to be there. Season four, two weeks. Season four really soon. They're, yeah, they're, they've been killing it. So I think you can point to people crashing and burning, but there's also tons of successes and it's based on a ton. But yeah, the Ho Hoyo people, they they know what's going on, man. Like they're, they killed it. It's funny how the, we've talked about live service for a very long time on the show now and the different aspects of, uh, you know, how you are successful or how you're not successful in that vein. And it just feels like it continually evolves and studios are just continuing to figure it out, which is, uh, yeah. We kind of talked about it last week, but like Helldivers 2 is an example of one that like kind of threw out the whole model and did something completely new and they're crushing it as live service too. And their model mm -hmm. isn't anything like uh, Hoyo. Like they're, yeah, they, they're all different ways to succeed. Totally different uh, thing. And I, I'm, I'm happy to see more people finding ways to succeed at this because um, I yeah. think it's going to be important. Yes, in my head, I'm presently calling Helldivers a narrative live service um, because <laughs> they're actually not changing all that much. They're just adding kind of story context around things yeah which they're good smart. at promoting it mm -hmm. yeah yeah they're, they're kind of just like keeping it viral even though they haven't actually put out much content i think they're getting their first content drop soon right the season the second uh pass or whatever um so th that's cool but yeah it's it's interesting to follow um katie cotton says season four is in a month oak i don't know what i don't know what well, the it's release in may i mean it's at the top of may right katie so it's april 14th Maybe All it's right. May 14th. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Um, real quick before Travis, you, I just saw this. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Steam charts, but gives nice. you an idea of how popular Fallout to your to your prior point, Hogue, we were talking about. Look at this increase 
this week in uh, or a 30 day gain uh, in Fallout games since uh, the show came out last week. So and look at pretty crazy. Man. Like Amazon doesn't yeah. make direct money from that. Like you're going to you're not going to see these kinds of relationships again. I don't no. think with that being the benefit, or it's going to cost the people that have the brand much more money to get things like this done because it does have such a bounce for something that's Microsoft owned, not Amazon owned. Yeah, yeah now, it's cool. Now I'm kind of curious. Was there like a big increase when Halo released? I don't think so. Where did it go down? Not, <laughs> not that I even saw Dan, and you know I see pretty much everything Halo. I did not see that. No, actually, when I was I was on my PS uh, PlayStation app uh, doing something or downloading something, and in the in the store on the app, Fallout was the second. Yeah, uh, most same on Xbox. Game. Yeah, it's yeah. craziness. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't doubt it one bit. Yeah. Well, and the nice thing, like if if we didn't already mention it on Game Pass, both on PC and Xbox, they're all included. So you can just play. You can go play any of those games. Yeah, it's like five bucks right now, I think, on PlayStation. Or yeah, it's cheap on Steam. On Steam, I know, Steam is well. like 30 bucks for everything or something like that. Oh, for four. I was talking about 76. I'm sorry, but yeah. Oh, no, I was talking about four. Four was the gotcha. one that was on there. But I'm pretty sure you can get a bundle of it on Steam and just get everything for like 30, right? It's like something ridiculous. Mm, gotcha. Hogue, I just noticed you commented in StreamYard here, and it put Hogue Law, thanks, Katie, on your channel, and put Season Gaming, thanks, Katie, on our channel. <laughs> That's awesome. Sorry about that. Um, I don't know well, how no, you're fine. It's just funny. He's uh, he's doing a dual service over here. Uh, Travis, what do you got, man? Yeah, so um, I finished a review last night on a game I'm really excited to talk about. Um, I will be able to tell you that I reviewed it and... That's basically it next Sunday. So um, I'll be I'll be here to tell you what that game is. Um, and then um, my, my review will actually not be out until I think the week after. So it's going to be a while before I can really talk about the game. Um, but yeah, I, I will be playing No Rest for the Wicked this week. I'm doing our early access review over at IGN. So get ready yes. to be talking about that game. I didn't know you were doing um, that too. We got to we gotta uh, sync up on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll be playing that on Thursday. And then... Um, we also did an episode of Fireteam Chat at IGN this week, which got a lot of uh, a lot yeah, of attention uh, randomly. So y'all uh, are fired it, back up about Destiny. Yeah, uh, we didn't really talk about that on this show, but they they did a huge stream that brought a whole lot of people a lot more confidence, myself included, that the final shape might actually be good. Um, so you can see me talk about that uh, on Fireteam Chat or on my weekly Destiny podcast, The Last Word with the Bontis and Lord Cognito. Um, and, uh, yeah, destiny is actually looking like it's got some life to it and maybe, maybe, a yeah, the people I know are pumped about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah the, the, uh, the stream kind of surprised everybody because the last one sort of went over not great, but it looks like the delay was the right call because they've, they showed off, of, you know, we're getting our first new enemy faction. We're getting a new, uh, subclass that really is for advanced players and allows you to kind of customize a lot more. So it looks really cool. Um, and I'm, I'm more hopeful for it that it's going to be, uh, a worthy finale to this 10, 10 year saga. So, Hang on, my brother um, has betrayed me. You can never start a chat with this, brother. Noise. <laughs> Travis is a thousand percent right. Like none of the rest of the content matters. You can't say that. You've given him too much. <laughs> too much power, Tom. Uh, much yeah. Power. So well, just just to clarify, what he's talking about is the uh, the cost of creating new content in live service. Which yeah, and and yeah, I, I know this because he's a developer, and I I know this stuff because I talk to developers who work on live service games about this. Uh, live service games has been my main beat at IGN for years, and even before I was at IGN, I covered Bungie when they were figuring out what live service even was and and all that stuff. So I know a lot about how those games work. Um, just don't ask me how they actually make them. Um, <laughs> so well, I'll leave that Magic. to Tom. They write some Tom letters Tom. down and there's some semicolons. Then it's real easy. You didn't hear. Screen. Yeah. 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 It's pretty simple. Or super easy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, you can look at my destiny coverage, look at my review next week. Um, and then I think I'm going to finally be able to talk about a, um, a game I played at GDC uh, coming up pretty quick here. Uh, for some reason, I had an embargo that was like a month long. So um, I'll be able to talk about some cool uh, an ex IGN exclusive reveal that I uh, covered. So World premiere. Oh, and yeah, world premiere. <laughs> and also uh, keep keep an eye out for more Eternal Strands coverage. We got another article Tuesday and Thursday this week that I think you guys That's are going to enjoy. Fantastic. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep talking about it every weekend. Um, and then, uh, yeah, check us out uh, over on the Season Gaming Discord. We got some people. If you're getting back into Fallout, there's people talking about playing Fallout 76, getting together. So, yeah, hit us up. We're out there. 
Fallout 3 Other works that, surprisingly well on your modern Xbox. Yeah, 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 it does. Um, so enjoy your week of gaming. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Thank you for your generosity. As always, really appreciate all of you. Hope you have a great week, and we will see you next Sunday. Till then, peace. <laughs>